And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have my two good brothers here in the temple. We have the we have the man who pro the man who could probably speed run a randomize a randomizer of 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 Metroid, or at the very least, commentate on it. Good brother Shades. And we have the man who pro who probably who probably could who probably could survive a few ice beams aside from myself. Good brother Xanatrix, also the bane of my fucking existence. Let's not forget that. <laughs> That's the more important part. Mm -hmm. Yes, can't yeah, forget that. <laughs> so, as you can see, this week we are ta this week we are tackling the black sheep, because we because in one form or another we en we enjoy ourselves some Metroid. Whether it be whether it be in two D or in three D form, and with the success of Dread, despite 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 certain despite certain people trying to get get up in a tissy about the price, hi David Jaff. Yeah. Who? I'm sorry, I haven't heard that name in such a long time. I figured they were dead. I was, I was gonna say I'm about to be like Obi Wan Kenobi, I'm like David Jaff. That's a name I've not heard in a long time. Oh, uh, the reason I say that I figured he was dead is because I'm pretty sure he already committed career suicide. <laughs> well, I was about to say, after, after Twisted Metal, for fuck's sake. <laughs> that alone was enough to kill anyone's career. Twisted Metal PS3 was a massive disappointment, but maybe... But, um, maybe that, that might maybe, be a subject for later. Yeah, yeah. Spe especially especially since I do, I do want to talk about Black one of these days. Oh, hell yeah, I'm in on that shit. But, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about... The the black sheep of a different franchise, shall we? Yeah, because <laughs> the concept of I, the concept of franchise killers is is a funny thing, since for since a lot of the time it could it could certainly be argued, but sometimes fate has other ideas. Like let's not forget, for the longest time we thought the it was thought that the Schumacher Batman films killed off the idea of doing Bat doing Batman on the silver screen. Then Batman Begins happened, we all know how that turned out. <laughs> yeah, but that's a different whipping boy for us. Yeah, oh. you know, and I'm going to be actually one of the few that actually says that the Schumacher films aren't as bad as people make it out to be. Oh. I mean, they're not great, they're not perfect, they have their problems, don't get me wrong, but let's... I I don't they're not that bad. I don't dis I don't disagree. I do th I do think that they're overhated and I think sh I think I'd rather remember I'd rather remember Schumacher for things like Lost Boys or Falling Down. Yeah. But yeah, th in regards to tonight's subject, mm -hmm. to, to even consider this a franchise killer, honestly, I think that's a bit of a stretch and I'll explain why here in a second once we get the full introduction out of the way. Yeah. So Metroid Other M, aka Kojima makes this shit look easy, aka, aka the po the the directing career suicide of Yoshio Sakamoto, which and writing, which which we will get to, which we will get to, and the the st the status of. First off, I I do want to I do want to make one little um one little ca one little caveat when it comes to this. Metroid Other M was a collaborative project between Nintendo and Team Ninja, and arguably the res the smoothness of of how it turned out is the reason why Nintendo op opened the door to, to to working with other companies like say Ubisoft for the Mario Rabbids thing, which was ba which was basic which was basically just a um. Basically, just a Mario version of XCOM, but without without XCOM probabilities. <laughs> <laughs> I I know people that would disagree with you there, Monk. A few. Well, that's the thing about probabilities. Even if they even if you do tweak them for to make them a little easier, uh, you're still dealing with probabilities. That randomness will always either screw you or bless you. <laughs> RNG Jesus does not save. <laughs> no, it but, does not. But I I do want to make one call here because. Well, yes, by all extent, all intents and purposes, Metroid Other M is indeed the black sheep of the Metroid franchise, unless you're talking spinoffs, and that's a whole other can of worms I don't feel like getting into. If this is the black sheep of the franchise, 
I'd say Metroid did pretty good for itself. <laughs> like, if this is the worst Metroid has to offer, quite frankly, uh, you're not exactly setting the bar very low there. Truth be told, if, if someone were to put a gun to my head and ask me what I think the worst Metroid is, it's not going to be Other M. I still, no. I still find the weakest entry to be the Game Boy version of Return of Samus. And that's Which largely is why due they've to, since remade it. And that's largely <laughs> due to har that's largely due to um, hardware limitation. Yeah, it's not even really that the, the game's fault. I mean, they tried their best, but bear in mind that was so early on in the in, in Nintendo's careers in video games. To 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 really fault them for anything would kind of be uh, would kind of just be uh, digging for bullshit you don't need. Mm -hmm. Now that being said, I will. There are plenty of things that we will be tearing other M a new a new one for with this, but I want as I mentioned as I mentioned with you guys a while back, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Team Ninja and put him in a little little bulletproof bubble, and I'm gonna put that bubble right over here in the back. So everything that we say is going to be focused more on. More on more on on some parts Nintendo's part and on Yoshio Sakamoto's part, not necessarily Team Ninja. This isn't reflecting bad on you because you're in your bubble, okay? I I I would like to make one one thing before we put it in the bubble that is likely a combination between T Team Ninja and Nintendo mm -hmm. making Metroid a third person action game, because that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Metroid Other M was an action game. Was really fun. But w while we are not gospel by design here, Metroid has a very intrinsic identity tied with exploration. And that action gameplay uh, limited at least a little bit the type of exploration you could perform. Now, the story limits most of the exploration you can perform, and we will get to that. But at least that little bit... Um, if Team Ninja got another chance, they sh especially since they won't be working with the Wii hardware and the god-awful transition to first person by pointing the fucking Wii remote at the TV... Um, you could do a third-party action game with a button that allows you to aim down sights, and that would fix everything. Now, what, I th the funny thing is that up, up until this... Metroid Other M could be considered the end of the Prime era. In what, even, though the, even though this wasn't Retro Studios' involvement, there was, there was still some DNA. Because up, up until that point, you had a kind of... A kind of par a kind of parallel development set up when it came to Metroid, because obvi obviously me obviously um, Metroid Prime is a story in and of itself when it came to its development, and to the to the point to the point where the, to the point where they ended they ended up having to redo the whole thing from scratch because because of, because some people at Retro Studios were too busy fucking around, um. But because of the fact that they didn't know if Metroid Prime was even going to do all that well, given how massive a risk it was, they they started development on Fusion, which what which was which was referred to as Met as Metroid Four early on, as a as a safer bet in case in case Prime didn't work. Now, as as we know as we know that didn't well. While both end up doing well, Prime ended up doing much better, arguably helped by be, by being. I think it. I think it was a game. I think it was on the GameCube launch line, or if it, if not the launch line, very early on in the GameCube's life cycle. It was definitely very early on, yeah. And because and because it did well, obviously that obviously that would get a, that would end up getting a sequel in the form of Echoes, while the while the while the GBA team, which which was being headed by Yoshio Sakamoto, who's basically the stepfather of Metroid for the longest time, and this is a this is a name that's going to get crop going to get brought up a lot, so keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. a after Fusion, the next project that the next project that they had was 
was um, Zero Mission, which was a, which was essentially an enhanced remake of the of the original Metroid, with an epilogue in the Zero Suit to explain where it came from. Mm-hmm. And these, and when it comes to, and when it came, eventually, eventually there would be a there would be a third entry. On the on the Wii to kind of wrap to kind of wrap up that that particular arc with the with the Metroid Prime games, which for a lot of people I'd say was I'd say was going to go down as their entry point for Prime. So then we then we get to the the announcement of um, Other M, and this is this is where there's a bit of a tricky situation because it being on. First off, there was there was the notion there they had they had the notion early on that they had that they felt they had they felt they had to go 3D, uh, and the and the fact that Sakamoto wanted want, wanted a wanted a movie like experience, which it which very much puts him at odds with a lot of a lot of the design ethos that you see within Nintendo, where. If you look at if you look at the way Nintendo develops games, they have a gameplay first attitude. Yes, hmm. there is cer- there's certainly nothing wrong with that, but it, it but it is but it is it is a bit of an issue because one because one particular one particular problem that had to that had to be addressed was the fact that you're going to have two audiences coming at this no matter what. On one side, you have an audience who largely leans towards the prime end of things, and on the other side, you have an audience that largely leans towards the 2D end of things. And w- and while fusion may have been a bit may have been a bit linear, um, f- it st- it still meant it still managed to hold up, and zero and zero mission held up as well. Here's the problem, though. Um, Sakamoto's team had no idea how to do three, how to do 3D programming because they never did it, which was where which was what which is the primary reason why Team Ninja was brought in. Um, as far as far as why that studio among up out of out of any studio was brought in, I can't I can't say for certain. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if if the if the off if the offer was from. Um, Hayashi, given the fact that they were looking to expand outside of Ninja Gaiden and, De- and Dead or Alive, after 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 giving um, after giving the Japanese Tommy Wiseau that being Tomonobu Itagaki the boot. Uh, Itagaki, hmm. you did some great things, but then you became a complete and utter douche about everything else. Yeah, and it's it's funny that at one at one point he was at one point he was in a war of words with Hideki Kamiya. I think in, I think Kamiya <laughs> won out won out in the long run when it came to that. Hideki Kamiya wins every word war. He just tells you to eat shit. <laughs> he exactly win against somebody who just doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> right. Although I I have se- although on the other hand I have seen my fa- I've seen my fair share of interviews with um with Itagaki. The the big reason that I call him the Japanese Tommy Wiseau is because Whenever he gives a response, I end up I end up having more questions than I do answers, and not in the way I'd like to. <laughs> I mean, also look at the way he dresses. You can't say he doesn't look like Tommy Wiseau in a lot of his interviews. <laughs> oh yeah, right. I've, I've seen images. Holy shit! Mm-hmm. But trying trying to ba- trying to balance those trying to balance those two and get and give and giving it to Team Ninja. Um, was de- was definitely is definitely an odd choice. I w- and on some on some level, yeah, they were they were going to they were going to be able to handle it. On the on the other hand, there is one small problem with bringing in Team Ninja. Team Ninja is Team Ninja has never has not really done non-linear design in their in in their work. Yep. Close. The closest thing to non-linear design is some of the backtracking you could find in the original Ninja Gaiden. 
well, Ninja Gaiden and Ninja Gaiden Sigma. Let me cor let me correct myself. And that was that was more of the DNA of of it fo of it following in the footsteps of games like Onimusha. Yeah, but even then, like to do a full on exploration with hidden areas and secrets to find, that's definitely not nin that's not Team Ninja's wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. And. Now, now I'm pre I'm pretty sure some could argue. Well, why why not hand that why not hand that segment over to, over to a third studio? Having multiple studios work on a single project is going to result in communication issues. It's a recipe for disaster. We've seen it time and time again when others others have tried. Now that that's that's one of the reasons why why a lot of the game why a lot of the games coming out of the Unholy Quartet, especially from EA, have that issue because. I'll use um I'll use bat I'll use Battlefront 2 as an ex as an example with this. The ship battle parts were done by Criterion. The on foot parts were done by Dice. The cutscenes were done by Blur Studios. And all mm. and I can I can guarantee you none of none of them are in the same time zone. Yeah, it quickly becomes a case of the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. Mhm. Mm now, when it comes to, I'd say the uh, now one pr one particular avenue that I see that I see some people say was a bad move was going with this whole action based action based approach, and this is this is where we get to one of the one of the early insistencies from Sa from Sakamoto, because the whole the whole thing of only using the Wii gamepad was his idea. He want he wanted a, he wanted a simple control setup. I'll I'll uh, as if you were feel as if it you were feeling like you were playing an NES game. Uh, Sakamoto, you idiot! I am I am paraphrasing his words. That's why he was against utilizing at the very least the nunchuck or even a pro controller. Again, Sakamoto, you idiot! It's a good thing that uh. Dolphins have learned to let us use controllers with uh, with other M if you just want to enjoy the action gameplay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I can understand not wanting to use certain aspects, but not even using a pro controller like that just seems kind of dumb. And it led to them creating a system that just made things convoluted. Yeah, especially especially since when it came now the the idea the idea was. You want to do that while at the same time wanting to do a very a very a, a very active movement setup where you're where you're constantly constantly dodging and and going on the offensive. Well, uh, I think the the reason for that particular look into the action gameplay was to emulate how how much movement freedom you had on the 2D games. We've seen uh, as as an example, we've seen Mercury Steam emulate that sort of action with the uh with the samus returns remake and with with dread mm -hmm. um so i'm thinking that he wanted to emulate the freedom of motion that you get from the 2d games which if ninja theory or excuse me uh team ninja <laughs> brain is not all here today sorry guys mm -hmm. uh if Team Ninja had been allowed to develop for, say, a gamepad, you know, allowed to develop for the Pro Controller, or even just the Nunchuck, um, and then again, the whole aim down sights thing that I was mentioning earlier, mm -hmm. uh, you could have gotten that freedom of motion and still... You you would have had an even more satisfying gameplay loop, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to, like, I'd I'd say I'd I'd say one of the one of the big issues with trying to do that is trying to do so much with so with so little um so little button, and also trying trying to have that same freedom of motion on that on that particular space with a D pad. <laughs> yeah, you kind of need an analog stick for that, don't you? Yeah, I mean, even even in Super Metroid, it can get a little tricky to do certain moves because it's the fact you have to use a D-pad for a lot of it. It's why 
having an analog stick became such a godsend in later generations. But you know, and, and again, but and there is some, there is some understanding about simplicity. You know, keep things simple. You know, KISS. We've all done it before. But there does come a point where there is such a thing as too simple. And this was a case of, again, the controls were too simple, thus it made the gameplay too complicated with everything you had to do, especially with that whole first-person shooting mode. And that search mode, which, yeah, that shit was the bane of my existence in that game. Mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like these I feel like things like the search mode and the and the and that first person perspective when it came to the missiles, it seemed that seemed to be there as a for for no other reason than a consolation to the pe to the people who may have gotten their start with the prime games. Yeah, it was absolutely a callback to the prime games. It was, and it failed miserably, especially. Especially with one scene near the end where you're supposed to search for like three different like things in this plant filled forest, and the pinpoint accuracy you have to have to find anything, good fucking Christ. Well, and additionally, um, trying to call back to Prime and failing to do so with a first person action sequence that is less mobile than Prime, because Correct me if I'm wrong, but when you were in the first person mode, jumping and everything else was just harder. No, you could yeah, when you were in first person, you couldn't move. Oh, no, that's you, right. You that was you were completely stationary. That's right. And uh whereas as everybody who's played any of the Metroid Prime games knows, you can jump, you can run, you can shoot, and you can even turn into the morph ball if you want a third person perspective. Yeah. That's what made it work is because yeah, the, the thing is, is that with the first person view in Prime, everything kind of just fell into place, and they had to make the caveat of putting the morph ball in third person because it wouldn't make sense to try to do a morph ball in first person. That would have just been dumb. You know, and, what my, you know, what my, you know, what my, <laughs> my, um, the, and yes, I know head cannons get the head cannon, but you know what my explanation for why you get in third person, uh, third person mode while in the morph ball? Uh, you know? uh because of the fact that. Uh, when you're curled up like that, you're not going to be able to see while you're rolling. And so the Chozo technology accounts for that and gives you a, a view of yourself. You know, that's a headcanon I can get behind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I am more than willing to just say headcanon to get the headcanon, but hey, this is something that kind of makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, but when... But when it comes to... But the, the, big, prob the big problem is... When you when you look at uh, when you look at the game design that 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 um ninja that you have with um, Ninja Gaiden or even even with some of their more even with some of their um helper studio stuff that they've done like like say Hyrule Warriors or or Dissidia NT their sen their sense of action always has a always has a constant flow yes which I think I think makes the first person parts all the more egregious when you end up breaking that flow yeah. It, it it does not make any sense to go into first person mode just to shoot missiles. Ben, that was never a thing. Like mm -hmm. if you were even in the two D games, you just shot the damn missiles. Yeah, it, it, everything just worked. You know, it would just again. It was unnecessary. It it forced and because of the simple controls, they had it made it too simple for the controls. Thus, they had to make that whole first person thing that much more complicated. So, what you're saying is, uh, missiles. It just works, it just works. Oh, no. oh, oh, we're gonna play that part, are we? <laughs> we're gonna play that card, give me a minute. Uh, where's that button? Oh, do I not have that button say? Oh, there, here it is. There we go. But, uh... The, yes, it is telling that you couldn't just fire the missiles with one more button combination. Um... Because there were no more button combinations left on just the Wii Remote. Yeah. What I find... What I find... What I find I'm not sure if it was... 
what I find kind of amusing about 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 the whole thing is this is Ether M is is meant to take place directly after um, Super Metroid. At least at but, least that's the in, that's the intent. And yes. because of that you because of that you are supposed to be having the the same le the same level of ge of gear that you ha that you had previously. Eh, and don't wor don't worry we'll get we'll get to that thing. Mm. But what I but what I want to what I want to focus on is is that is the le is when it comes to when it, that a lot of the upgrades within other M were relegated to expand expanding your health, expanding your missile capacity, expanding your expanding your um expanding the charge time and the de the charge time and de and damage. Things things that are certainly going to be nice, but they're not go but they're not going to give a feeling of be of being more powerful. Like do, do you use it do, do you really end do you really end up feeling like you've accomplished something if say you get if say you get an upgrade that redu that reduces the charge time of of a uh, char of a charge cannon by ten percent. No, it just feel that feels like something most most mobile games do, where you get minuscule upgrades for and just no, that's not what works. What made Metroid work was that the upgrades gave you new abilities new and more powerful abilities strong, super powerful beams that made you feel like a badass by the end well the other, the other factor is that every ability that you gained um was was also another was also another method of traversal just about yeah yeah uh, either either another method of tra either another method of traversal or or a or a means to or a means to Deal with enemy types that you know that up until that point you couldn't confront. Yep. Every new ability had a utility to it beyond mm -hmm. just being a slightly stronger weapon. Yeah. There's and now grant those sort those sort of percentage modifiers you can get away with that in in say a strategy game where you, where you're not where you're um where you're not where you're going to be you're going to be looking at a lot of number crunching as it is. Like you can, you can, you can somewhat get away with that in, say, Civilization or or even or even Warcraft. Getting uh, away with it in Civilization actually makes sense. Mm -hmm. Percentages to the types of numbers that you're using uh, is a huge difference. Yeah. So that's actually really useful. But again, it's all about knowing your audience and knowing your game. Mm-hmm. And. I do, but I but when it comes, I do want to bring something else up when it comes to this idea of go, going more action, going more fast-paced, action-based. What was somehow a, was somehow a bad idea? Because there was there was one other um, there's one other franchise where I heard this I heard this quite a bit a couple years ago. That that being soccer that being the most recent Sakura Wars, which is actually really good, going more action-based. Instead, instead of instead of the skirmish RPG that Sakura Wars has been since the beginning, the reason get the reason given that they that they wanted to do that approach is one, um, this is this was this was this was not meant to be a full on a full on Sakura Wars sequel. It's its own thing, and two, the in, the inspiration for it was the was the opening cinematic for um, I think it was three um, is. Per I can't, I can't remember the numbering of it, but the subtitle was "Is Paris Burning." I can't remember if that. I, I can't remember if that was three or not. I can't remember either. Um, the point. The side point is, no go ahead. Side sh side shilling note: Sakura Wars is a DLC uh, DLC set of characters in Super Robot Wars Thirty. Pre-order your copy today. <laughs> You've got <laughs> you've got exactly two days to pre-order at this point, people. At least at the time of this I, recording. I got a I got a I got a pre-order copy already gifted to me. I just need to get the DLC for it later. Yeah. I uh I paid the hundred and forty dollars for the entire Ultimate Edition because I want that season path and all all five uh, DLC packages. Yeah. <sighs> but the the point is is that the point is is that go is that doing a gameplay shift in a, in a, in a given um franchise 
is not the deal breaker that I think a lot I think a lot of people claim it is. Not at all. Um, <clears throat> in fact, uh, the gameplay was besi again besides the clunky first person mm -hmm. was one of the most enjoyable points about Other M. I do remember oh, some yeah. people saying the takedowns felt too God of War ish, which. When you consider when you consider that Samus is a bounty hunter, that 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 um that space pirates and the like piss them piss themselves in fear over, and the and the fact that Samus is supposed to be essentially a post human. Yep, part Chozo DNA with a bunch of Chozo training. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it certainly it certainly makes sense. What you I the way I, the way I look at it is the is is kind of the way Samus is portrayed in combat in both the Metroid manga and in in some of the in that bit in that bit of cutscene from the opening to Smash Brothers Melee. Um and of course uh in Metroid Dread and, and the uh Metroid 2 remake just the general type of combat flow you have with the melee counters and the finishers against mm -hmm. a lot of the Metroids especially in again the Metroid 2 remake. Yeah. It's. I want to see that gameplay again in a good Metroid game. I want to see that action gameplay in a in a Metroid that has not hampered it with a shitty control scheme, and also maybe make that the only thing Team Ninja touches. Just the action gameplay. Leave that to them. Put in the other systems, the morph ball, all the traversal types, everything. Mm -hmm. Try and involve them a little bit in the action, like the screw attack. Obviously, the screw attack would be fantastic in action combat. Mm -hmm. And so would the shine spark. Uh, by the way, getter references, always a good thing. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. but, but then add to that all the exploration stuff that we expect... Team Ninja gets to focus, they get to focus, hyper-focus, in fact, mm -hmm. on making this fantastic action system, and then the, you know, whoever we assign on it, maybe we try and get Mercury Steam to make a 3D Metroid, wouldn't that be weird? Or we just have Retro Studios go, okay, we'll work with Team Ninja, and they make the 3D Metroid all together, and you would get this character action adventure game with a ton of exploration you could still even have things like someone abusing some of the combat loops like like you can do in the devil may cry series you're, refer to, you're referring to the true style community i'm um, not not quite true style but just like abusing enemy step to get into areas you shouldn't mm -hmm. you could do that for sequence breaking and you could plan around it you could plan around it and it would be fucking magnificent. Yeah, one thing. One thing, I will. I will note that there are certain parts where it where it still maintains the kind of atmosphere one would expect. But if there's one thing that was certainly a mis was certainly a mistake, it was it was putting in it was putting in cutscenes. And granted, the company that they used for the cutscenes is one that Team Ninja has wor has worked alongside for years. But putting them in, as well as the sheer amount of them, is one of the major reasons why Other M has the lar is the largest Wii game in terms of in terms of space. And the uh, the it, it, looking at Other M and and at every other Metroid game, literally every other Metroid game besides Metroid Prime Pinball and probably Federation Force. Mm -hmm. um, the the storytelling is environmental for the most part. Yeah. Uh, Fusion has you interacting with the computer that is Adam. Sort of, kind of, but not really. But most of the storytelling, such as the SAX constantly trying to fucking murk you, mm -hmm. um, it's all environmental. Of, of course, you know, the Emmys are an even scarier SAX from what I hear, so... <laughs> Because they're fast instead of just, you know, Samus speed. They're like, oh, you're going to fucking die. I'm going to get you. <laughs> um, but when it comes, when it comes to, when it comes, the big reason what, the big reason why the, why these cut, why these cutscenes are an, are an issue is 
one they end they end up being they end up being breaks in the in the narrative and much it's kind it's kind of like it would be kind of egregious as putting say cutscenes cutscenes in Half Life. You're dealing with games that 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 pride themselves on an unbroken narrative. And two, in a lot of in a lot of those cutscenes, what's the reason why they had to be cutscenes to begin with? Um. Now, we've kind of, we, that's why <laughs> we've kind of danced around it a bit, but I think I think we need to get I think we need to get into the writing end of things. And before we but before we do, I want to bring up. One particular thing that the late Satoru Iwata had had to say in reg in regards to the development of Other M that so that um, Sakamoto is is ve is extre is extreme is extremely passionate about it, about wa about wanting about wanting certain things. Basically, saying saying he's very saying he's very dead set on wa on wanting things a certain way, and. <laughs> Iwata was never one to badmouth his colleagues, so it makes sense that he would say it in such a diplomatic way. Oh, he said it in a diplomatic way, but he was basically trying to have a dip. He was trying to he was trying to put a diplomatic version of of he of he's a stubborn bastard because he had, in that same breath he had also said he's very good, he's very good at having a vision, but he's not very good at communicating that vision. <laughs> and again, it's it's all very diplomatic. I, Iwata was, uh, you know, Iwata was. The most wholesome person at Nintendo ever. Mm -hmm. uh, we all love him dearly. We all wish he wasn't gone. Um, and we're very sorry, even to this day, that mm -hmm. he passed the way he did. He is but certainly it, missed, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he, uh, he was always one to try and spin the best side of whomever or whatever he was talking about. Because he wanted people to have fun and focus on the fun. Mm -hmm. That that being that being said, if if um if he has to stretch it that far <clears throat> in order to in order to in order to be in order to be in order to be diplomatic about it, I think I think that's saying something because there there were um I should I should also note that that um. One of the other problems was that th was that there wasn't exact there wasn't exactly a very top down um, leadership structure. Everybody, ev literally everybody had input, which resulted in meetings that lasted, I shit you not, eight hours. Good God! And there there were there have been stories about people meant people going through full meals in the in the middle of in the middle of meetings because of how long they took. That doesn't surprise me, oh. unfortunately. Because because it was a case of a lot of pe a lot of people would would want to, especially programmers would want to put in their own little inputs, to to try and to try and make the game the best that they thought it could. The prob the problem is, you know what they say about too many cooks in the kitchen. I don't think this case is too many cooks in the kitchen, monk. I think it was this case of uh, of people trying to make reasonable uh, suggestions, and Sakamoto going. That doesn't that doesn't align with what I want. Fuck you. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, there there was definitely some parts of that to the point where he um to the to the point that he to the point that when it came to a musical sting, he had he had the pianist keep do, keep doing it time and time again because it because it wasn't right. And the vibe what a that dick. I. <sighs> The vibe that I get when I when I when I look at um, Sakamoto is that I uh, I know it I know it's easy to I know it's easy to say that that somebody should have been a filmmaker like the people who have a the people who have a hate boner for for Kojima, but I on, I honestly think that in on some regards Sakamoto may 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 be better served getting into filmmaking. Maybe so, um I'm. Not sure he'd be happy there either. He wouldn't be happy anywhere knowing him. <laughs> at the, at the, ver at the very least, at the very least, there's a long lineage of of filmmakers who are dicks. So, <laughs> so he, I guess he'd be, I, I guess he'd be among his kind. As much as we love Stanley Stanley Kubrick in this house, Stanley Kubrick abused the shit out of his actors. So yes, he'd be among his kind. 
but with the, with that in mind, I th I think we should get I think we should get into the story because there's there were a couple th there were a couple of things that they that they wanted that they wanted to do with the story and some some people have said that they shouldn't have done this to begin with that the, that these were bad ideas from the, from the get go whereas I have the mindset of I'm not entirely sure if they were bad ideas or badly executed ideas the first that's always the question <laughs> the first of these is is further exploring Samus as a, as a character I've seen some people say that that that, that shouldn't there was there was the argument for the longest time that that shouldn't be done because Samus is is supposed to be the stoic silent protagonist. Um I can given I can't quite I can't quite agree with that, especially since I find a lot of people who who make who make that argument don't quite un, don't one don't understand what stoicism is and two um don't un don't understand the don't understand the idea of of um because a lot of characterization. The, the funny thing in one point is that is that somebody tried to use Master Chief as an example of a of a of a proper um stoic silent protagonist. Except <laughs> that's a bad example because one Master Chief talks and two <coughs> he's been he's been he's John has been John has been his own has been his own character for the longest time. Um, yeah, but I'd say I'd say given given the rising popularity of the given what was done in Fu in fusion and to a lesser degree zero mission with the with these almost um, journal journal like journal like entries and the and the fact that the and the fact that the that the Metroid manga. Started to get expo started to get exposed to a wider to a wider audience through fan translation, where she definitely is not a silent protagonist. I do th I do think that bringing that kind of thing full circle on paper is not a bad idea. What I'd say what I'd say is cer is certainly a bad idea is the how, and I I ended up finding out that. Even though there was a language barrier, um, a lot of a lot of the voice a lot of the voice direction with Samus in Other M, that is on Sakamoto. He 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 des he decided that he was going to handle voice direction, even the English voice direction himself. Yeah. Yeah, that was a dumb move. Um. Remember what? And. You you want to know what you want to know what was what was the parallel to, that propped up in my head when I learned about this? Power Rangers Wild Force. <laughs> okay, I can see it. Oh, I can see it, and I don't like it. Oh, don't don't you know don't don't you know a lot about spaceships? <laughs> I should shoot you for that. <laughs> so, so this is what it looks like from the other side. <laughs> yes. Is this the part where I play shades and tell Monk not to get penisy? <laughs> <laughs> By all means, be my guest. Don't be penisy, Monk. <laughs> <laughs> But, but yeah, and, and how ironic! Another show featuring a guy named Sakamoto, except that Sakamoto was actually good. Yeah. Then, then again, I then again, I do, I do remember, I do remember, yep, I do remember yelling at somebody in an Ultraman debate where I said, "You think you're you think you're honoring Subaraya's legacy, but you're actually honoring Akira Subaraya's legacy, you asshole." <laughs> but getting getting I back on, that getting back on the rails, just. The fact the fact that Sakamoto thought he, thought he could do cuz the vibe that the vibe that I kept getting as I was going through all these interviews a lot a lot of them a lot and a lot of them from things like from things like Ask Iwata the vibe that I kept getting from Sakamoto is someone who someone who wants who wants every little detail of it to go to go a certain way but all he all he can but his but isn't but isn't very good at the directing people on how, on how that way is supposed to go. It's just, it's just that well, he knows when something isn't right. 
it sounds to me like he's a control freak, but doesn't know what to do with that control once he has it. And uh, I would know that feeling because that's me half the time. <laughs> but he, even with even with that, I I would actually I would actually argue that tr that trying to that trying to trying to explore a bit more of Samus's past is some is something that is something that you could do. I know there's the argument that Nintendo characters don't really do don't really do a whole lot of that when it comes to when it comes to backstory. Except, except um, the I mean the thing the th even with that, when you look when you look at when you look at the major char when you look at the major characters within um, within Nintendo's um, canon, Samus has always been the odd woman out. Yeah, if we look at the three flagships, um, both both Link and Mario. As time has gone on, they've gotten more games in both 3D and 2D. Uh, and even if the stories or the <laughs> worlds entirely are different, or in the case of Link, you're in an entire you're an entirely different Link. The lore has expanded, and mm -hmm. thus the idea of what or who these people are has expanded. Mm -hmm. They've they've gone beyond little guy with sword and shield and or small. Uh, suspender man jumping on people thing. Mm -hmm. Whereas Samus, as much as we love her, most of her characterization has been uh, ever since the speed run of, of Metroid 1 revealed that it was a girl in the first place, has been badass lady kills shit good. I'd, I'd, say, I'd say that's the big reason why a lot of people latched on to the, to the Metroid manga. Because because it gave because it gave us our first our first real taste of characterization. Definitely. Yeah, the the problem uh, we had here was, as we're gonna soon look as we go through this, you're gonna soon learn. While as a child, you could allow Samus to be vulnerable when they're first starting out. Samus could be naive and vulnerable and weak, but by the time you're getting to the Metroid games proper, she's been through all that. She's faced those demons. Mm -hmm. So she's ready to be stoic, unwavering, just complete badass. You know, you could still have emotional moments, but she's not going to be easy to flinch. This game, as you will soon learn if you haven't played this already, contradicts that very heavily. And one th one particular th one when it comes to when it comes to the idea of a of a stoic character be emoting more um, what I find what I find an interesting contrast is you is you look at the look is that I didn't hear I didn't hear a whole lot of this kind of art of this kind of oh they have to be stoic all the time when when you started to see Master Chief opening up more in Halo 4 which Halo 4, Halo 4 is a game that I like and don't like at the same time but that's the a thing, subject for a different geek watch yeah but the the, fo the focus that I want to get the focus that I want to give is is master Ch is be is master chief having to deal with the concept that Cortana his compan his companion throughout the trilogy is di is dying from rampancy. Yeah. And there there is a yeah go ahead go ahead and the, and and the fact that he the fact that he ha that for the first time he has to take his own initiative on on things. For instead, instead of instead of following orders. Now, granted, some of the greater story in that does doesn't exactly doesn't exactly fit, but you did. But you didn't hear you didn't hear the you didn't hear that complaint the same way you did with other M. And or I think I can explain why. Mm -hmm. uh, th that's the point I was about to get to here. With that kind of situation, there's a ca there's a case of it's understandable why he would suddenly break. He's been used to a certain way of of doing things. And because of that, he could focus all of his emotional energy into just complete the mission, just get the shit done. Mm -hmm. But now he has to actually take the time to think about what he's doing and what the consequences will be. And you start to suddenly realize, oh shit, this there's there's the shit goes wrong with this, mm -hmm. you know. But with Metroid, with Samus, she's always been doing things on her own. 
She's had to learn to be independent. So she's already covered that character arc. Again, you can have moments where she forms a bond. Like, having the bond with the baby Metroid, after everything that happened in Super Metroid, you can understand her being at least a little emotional. Nobody would have complained if she showed a little emotion, if she cried a little, if she shed a tear or two here or there, mm -hmm. if she, she, she opened up a little bit more. But there came a point, there comes a point where you do that so hard that it completely breaks the character because they're now just an emotional wreck. You know, the best way to describe this, what Sakamoto and his team ended up doing with the story of Metroid Other M was instead of focusing on being uh, uh, Samus being a badass bounty hunt, uh, woman who just happened to be female, he tried to make her a woman in all the wrong ways. Um, so this is the part where I interject. Mm -hmm. um, there is a rumor, so again, grain of salt time, that part of the reason Samus was changed so much in Other M was that Sakamoto said that the fans' characterization of Samus as the stoic badass was all wrong, and that she was actually a very sensitive person, nearly uh, Yamato Nadeshko, in fact. I'm not going. I'm not going to completely jump. On I'm not going to completely jump on that. Oh, I know. There like I said, rumor. <laughs> but I, I would, be, I would be willing to get to at least give it the time of day because of the fact that it fits within the Sakamoto is a control freak narrative that we've ki that we've kind of been establishing tonight. Mm -hmm. Um, um. Once again, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's the case. I'm simply saying that if it was, I'd be willing to believe it. But I'd, the but um, I do want I do want to call I do want to call back to um, to the a, to the AI version of um Adam Malkovich that we fir that we first saw in that we first saw in Fusion, where in the in that partic in that particular instance you ha that is a that is a case where that is a that is a counter argument to this whole you have that Samus should be the silent protagonist thing because. In each of those elevator scenes, you do have you do have a bit of a monologue in the, in a very captain's log kind of approach rega regarding the situation, and that's where the first drops are brought are brought up about how when she w when she was in when she was um, a Federation soldier, Adam w Adam was her was her CEO, and it's in, and it's implied basically a father figure to her. Yeah, it and. Sorry, go ahead. I got some point to add to this later. That particular thing, the the whole the whole time the um she's she treated the AI on the on that ship, on her, on her, our new ship after the whole thing with the parasite, as ju as just an AI, just an AI that was that was giving orders. But at the end of it, that that's when that AI ends up t ends up tipping its its hand with that whole any objections lady, and sh she and at the at the end of it, she realizes it's not it's not uncommon for for the for the for the um for the brains and behavior patterns of pe of people to be copied into artificial intelligences. And this is where I want to step in real quick because mm -hmm. that also that particular scene when she finally realizes that is a case where you where she did open up at that moment because she reacted when she realized this. Mm -hmm. When she realized there was more to that AI, because it literally had a brief cutscene where her she just her eyes widens, mm -hmm. her eyes widens. She's like, "What the hell? What?" You know, she had that moment. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing you can do with a character like Samus. Have her have those moments of shock and surprise, and have her emotionally go, "Wait, what the hell?" And and let her open up like, "My God, this is this is Adam." You know, and have that that scene at the end where she's realizing this and explaining all of this, it allows her to become a little more human. Mm -hmm. You can do that and still keep uh, things consistent with Samus's character. Mm -hmm. But again, they went way too far in the in that direction with other M, turning her into an emotionally unstable woman, a stereotypical woman. I should stress, you know. 
the kind of thing that we would joke about these days, and that's why she ended up becoming a joke in this game. I'd say, I'd say, and I'd say another, I'd say another factor is, um, obviously wanting, wanting to play, obviously introducing someone like Adam who has that kind of relationship. That's going to be, that's going to be some, that's going to be a bit of a bait that people are going to eat up and want more of. And I will, and I will admit the prospect of learning more about Adam was, was something that was something that did entice me early, early on. But there's, but there, but you have an issue of telling, not showing. We are told that at that Adam, what that Adam was a was a fought was her command was her commanding officer and was a and was a father figure to her. And, but we're but we are not shown that. We're sh we're shown in even in the flashbacks, Sam Samus be Samus being Samus being a bit. A bit too, a bit too impulsive, and a bit of, and a bit too emotional. While her, while her commander is pulling the stereotyp, the stereotypical, stoic "I have to follow orders" approach. And we've we've seen in, we've we've seen this particular dynamic in sto in stories in both science fiction and otherwise elsewhere, where th where typically the CO in this case has two has two faces that they're presenting. The sto the stoic side, and then w and then, when they're off record, the le the side that is less stoic, i.e. the i.e. the stoicism is only a, is a is is something is something that is a tool to be used, not a crutch. But that second side of the matter, we don't si we don't see, in um in other M. We only see we only see one side of it. Yeah, even in scenes where it should have been. Him big taking off that mask and just being himself for a little bit, he's still the same guy that he was when he was wearing said mask and being that stoic guy. Mm -hmm. He never changes, and that's that doesn't work. Yeah. As an as a small nitpick, can I just say that that uh, uh coming to physical character design, Samus is supposed to be six three. Why is she so short in, in other M? Especially Honestly, in the back, in the in the in the back, in the uh, flashbacks into the the uh, into the Federation uh, naval forces. Um, he's a short little shit in those things. Yeah, he's like five eight. And again, again, that goes back to my point. It, it all keeps going back to the same point: is that Sakamoto, for whatever dumb reason he was thinking, wanted to turn her into a stereotypical woman, someone who's always oh, going to be physically looks weaker. Someone who's emotionally weaker, because you know, it it really just it keeps coming back to that point. It bugs the shit out of me. Yeah, and but if we if we look at what we already knew about Samus at that point, she should have been that that six three uh, Amazon S even in in the Federation because the Chozo experimentation and training happened in her childhood. Yeah. There's the, no reason for her to look like that. There's a reason why why um even out even outside of even outside of their um power armor, Astartes are fucking big. Yeah, the power yeah. armor is huge. She should be she is huge. She should be able to rip and tear huge guts, goddammit. <laughs> God Yeah. And <laughs> but uh but b beyond that, um with the with the whole story showing and not telling and then not or i mean telling and then not showing and then also showing things that don't even make the point that they should make mm -hmm. um the relationship even in the flashbacks definitely she said it you know it became an in joke any any uh any objections lady and her giving the thumb down and all mm -hmm. that fun stuff it, it never sounds like a joke it always looks serious. It always looks like she was always some sort of contrarian, um, which, in an actual military, that gets you insubordination and then gets you kicked the fuck out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if not full on court martialed. Yeah, it's it, the the entire tone of the flashbacks and the interactions with the rest of the Federation members is. It's it, it it's incongruent. It's non-continuous. There's no connectivity. And then the whole "I'll follow your orders, Adam. Tell me when I can use my power bombs." The yesterday, uh, 
yes sir no sir thank you sir can i please have some more sir um is it feels like it's supposed to be some sort of atonement for being such a contrarian that almost feels like she's doing it to say i'm sorry that i said no so many times um it's Im- it's, it's implied that the that the reason that the reason for for that is is Adam having this idea that um, if she if she ends up un- un- unloading too much, they'll end up destroying the bottle ship. The- this woman has been using super missiles and super bombs and and fucking wave beams and ice beams for ages. She knows how to rein in her power. Now, you know what, Zan? I I do agree with you on that. And I want to, but I do want to provide one counter argument as to why she would still do this for Adam. It's less again. It's a dumb reason, and I'm not gonna sit here and say that this validates everything about the game. Fuck that noise. But the whole idea was that she did it out of respect. She, yes, she knows she can handle her shit, and maybe to some respect he does too. But he still, there's still that level of respect between the two that he, you know, that the game completely botches this. I should stress. <laughs> Especially with one particular scene that we all know and hate. Mm-hmm. We'll but, get to that scene. Oh, we will get to that scene, rest assured. But that was the intent, was that she was, she she activated her stuff out of respect for him because of their time back then. Again, the game completely messes this up, but that was the intent. There's- and... There's a 110% better way this could have been done. I want oh, hold, I the, hold that hold that off. We'll get to, we'll get to and we'll get to any sort of fixes later. Okay, I have one, and God damn it! I think we uh, all do, Zan. I we we will we will be sharing those later. Rest assured, I'm with you on this. Mm-hmm. Uh. <laughs> but when it comes to the, when it comes when it comes to the when it comes to this particular. You have you have that you have you have you very much have that whole tell don't show. I'd say, I'd say if there's I'd say, I'd say if there's anybody who, if there's anybody who um anybody who would who would most likely fit the bill of father figure. <laughs> it is, and I I hate to call, I hate to call him this because his name currently escapes me, but it's the member it's the member of the team who who for who who op- who opens up by calling Samus princess. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I know who you're talking. Hold on. You know what? Let's pull up the let's pull up the game's cast list here. Hold the uh, fuck up. Yeah. Shades has become our for flutter for the evening. I was gonna say, time for me to pull a flutter. Time um, for me to pull up my inner flutter. Yeah, t- time for you to head to the planet's bookshelves. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Let's see. Da-da-da. Was it this one? I believe his name was Anthony Higgs. Yeah. Yep, Anthony Hicks. That's the guy. And I should know one that there that um there's there's like there's like three plots that end that end up going that end up going down in this in this bottle ship thing, and not and none of them ever get truly resolved. At Especially first, not the one that she keeps talking about, the baby. Yeah, th- yeah. There's <laughs> um this is. The the whole thing with the baby and the fact that one of the one of the big one of the central protagonists is is named Melissa Bergman, and the fact that other M if you if you move that M you get mother, this is the reason why I made the joke about Kojima makes this shit look easy. Bottle <laughs> ship. Oh yeah, and the bo- bottle the, ship. The bottle ship. The fact that the distress signal is called baby's cry. The and ju- and all of that is <laughs> nah. I'd say I'd say the only game I've played in the last decade that matches that level of of trying of trying to scream foreshadowing at you or scream symbolism at you was Arkham Knight. <laughs> yeah. Also, a uh, bit of an aside here. I I I just as I was looking this up, do you guys want to hear the name of the voice actor of Anthony Higgs? Who? Hmm. I think you guys will appreciate this. Mike McGillicuddy. Wait, what? It's probably not the same guy, but... 
<laughs> yeah, it's not. I checked. But yeah, yeah. So you, you all think the same thing I did? <laughs> yes. I was like, wait, I had a double take when I saw that. I'm like, wait, what? All right, hold on. I gotta check this shit. If I if I ever if I ever meet if I ever if I ever if I ever meet Curtis, I'm pro I'd probably have I'd probably have to bring that up to him. Yeah. If I ever meet if I ever meet cold cold beer. As an as an aside, he looks so he looks so happy sounding the yellow horn a few years back. <laughs> um That and he has the best nickname on anybody in, in the up up down down roster. Cold beer. <laughs> Um, but the, but the, at the very, at the very least that, that character, when I think of, when I think of character, characters who might come off like a father figure in fiction, he, he has that, he has that energy more than Adam does. That's because Adam's all military at the time we see him. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's, he's more nurturing as an AI, to be honest. <laughs> he he, has, he no. really is. He's more concerned about her. He's like, you need to get out of there and go someplace else now. Mm -hmm. Or like, if you do the secret shine spark trick or in a circle to get one of the upgrades and you get that secret message, he's rather impressed. Almost like his little girl has done him proud. There's <laughs> there's also the there's also the whole thing where he where at the end he um he rebukes her original plan because if you're because remember Sam, Samus's original plan when it came to dealing with when it came to dealing with the research base was to was to just blow the whole thing up mm -hmm. he was like no if you do that they'll just go they'll just go down to the planet and and repeat the whole process all over again with the parasites so inst instead take both instead take both stones out at once yeah uh -huh. kill two birds with one stone mm -hmm. it's just that the two birds are really really fucking big <laughs> and she's dealt with bigger. Because at the very, I, so I I have I have to wonder if um, if if at if Adam had if Adam had been watching the One Year War at that point, because he's basically <laughs> our, he, he it's a fucking colony drop. Don't try and tell me it isn't. No 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 no, you're not wrong. You are not wrong, sir. <laughs> Samus hair has become Char Astable. <laughs> no, Adam is Char Astable. Samus is just the person pulling the trigger. There. Fair. <laughs> oh god. And again, she's blusted plenty of planets on her own, so <laughs> that oh. wasn't her fault. They all had fucking self-destruct sequences for no good reason. Or are they just completely unstable like in Prime 3? Mm -hmm. Again, not her fault. Yeah. No. <laughs> but you know, as as we've lovingly said on this uh, on this lovely uh monastery, once is an anomaly. Twice is a co is coincidence. Thrice is a pattern. <laughs> We're up to four with her already, or five. Yeah, I think I think that I think that's the reason why um T why TG nicknamed her the Lost Primarch. Even wrote even wrote a um stat sheet out for her. If you, my if only you problem wanted... with that is that she's too small. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, if you're if you're gonna use if you're gonna use them if you're gonna use a mini for a mini for her, which um I wouldn't I wouldn't advise in it I wouldn't advise anybody doing because that's because that's one character that's going to be ridiculously expensive. Um, she might be less expensive in BattleTech. Oh, and ba and BattleTech she'd probably she'd probably fit right. Al you could probably use the um elementals template and you'd have half your work done. Just a <laughs> just a just a extremely powerful elemental, who do who does not have who does not. Who is who is who has one particular who would have one particular advantage? All the advantages of elementals without all without being dirty clanners. <laughs> um, but there is but there is one other egregious thing that I that I remember being a major facepalm moment when it comes to when it comes to this whole um tell don't tell don't show thing, and that is her freezing up at the sight of Ripley. Oh, Ridley. 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 Oh, this scene. Okay. <clears throat> you know, a lot of people bitch about the about Adam's death being the breaking point. No, 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 no. This was the scene that broke me when it came to other M. And let me explain why, and I'm pretty sure you guys are going to agree with me on a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. If this had been the first time 
since her home planet that they had encountered each other, I could completely understand her shutting down like this. Mm -hmm. But by this point, excluding the Prime games, this is what, like, the third or fourth time these three have encountered, these two have encountered each other? Yeah. That Yeah, by that point, she's probably gotten used to him being around. Like, yeah, it really just shows up all the fucking time. You get used to it after a while. And so, you know... <laughs> There is it, it, the fact that the little that that little Furby looking fucker ends up growing up to being a ends up being a Ridley, but even even with that, you you fought you fought him you fought him once in the original, um twice if twice if you want to count Zero Mission, again you didn't fight him in, in Metroid Two, you fought him again in Super Metroid, and if you and if we want to if we want to include the Prime games, that's twice that's, tw that's Meta and twice. Omega. That is two, that is two more times. So you so you have three to five times that Ridley has shown up in some form or another, and and you could even possibly even count in the the uh, uh, Ridley X variant from Metroid Fusion because she fought a Ridley there too. Mm -hmm. Neo, so, yeah, that's like six times that she's fought Ridley by this point. Yeah, there is no reason that she should be having that level of a freakout. She could have a little like, wait, that's Ridley. That you could have that kind of reaction, just mm -hmm. a sudden shock, but then like, oh okay, let's go. So, something something I'd like to point out <clears throat> is that um, is is that this isn't even the first time Ridley has actually died. Uh, it's assumed by her at the end of Metroid. Yeah, that yeah, Ridley Ridley is dead. And then the Prime series occurs, and we get Meta Ridley, with his robotic prosthesis and all the fun stuff added to him, turning him into a cyborg. Because he, he he was he was defeated on Zebes, he was he was killed there. That is the implication. Um, and then of course you beat him as Meta Ridley in Prime One, and you're like, oh yeah, uh, he's dead again. Then you get to Prime Three, where he's infused with Phazon. And becomes Omega Ridley. And it's just like... And I assume... So... I would I would like to say that... Uh, while you don't fight him in the original Metroid 2... In the Samus Returns remake, he's the final boss of the game. Which was kind of out of left field. But I guess... Um, Mercury Steam felt that... It, there needs to be a Ridley because Metroid... They, didn't, they probably didn't quite know what to do with him. Or yeah, with, I, with, uh, with that part of Metroid. But... It's forgivable. <laughs> It's forgivable. So you get Proteus Ridley at that point. Which is is, is, is what the official name is, I guess. Um, then, after all of these encounters, where he, you've ostensibly killed him, and he's come back, you get Super Metroid, where Ridley pops up to just, you know... Grab the the Metroid the Metroid from the uh from the lab uh the lab and you have to escape that lab at the very beginning, um. And finally, you you know you kill Mother Bra Brain and uh, again, uh, Zebes explodes at this point, and apparently Ridley is killed. That that like full on. Oh yeah, you didn't see him come off the planet or anything. His you left his remains there. Uh, he must have been vaporized when the entire planet exploded. But when Ridley comes back because of the cloning, uh, there is this is after a string of times where oh yeah he's dead. Oh he came back. Oh yeah he's dead. Oh yeah he came back. Okay yeah. Oh, hey, he was on an exploded planet. Wait a minute. He's been through even phase on overload. I really shouldn't count him as dead. Yeah. Um, and, and then, and then, <laughs> and then another M, he pops out of the lava. She should have just been like, oh, it's you again, you stupid cunt. And yeah. shot him in the face with a charge shot. As soon as Ridley came out of the, out of the, out of the, out, out, out into the full, full view, she should have just like, oh, you again. Bam, 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 bam. And that starts the fight. You don't get anything else. Mm -hmm. But See, again, you could have a, a quick like, "Oh God, you again? 
you know, just have that quick reaction. It's like, oh, no, not again. But to have a full-on mental shutdown, a full blue screen moment because of a flashback, like, where was this three games ago? Well, and, and the big thing is, it's implied that what's happening to Samus is something that happens to real soldiers when they encounter a psychological trigger. And this, yes, this is the proper use of trigger, you assholes. Um, that she's suffering a PTSD flashback episode. Because, I mean, the whole the whole scene shows her as a tiny child and, and Ridley stalking up on her. It's like, you've worked through your PTSD by now. You've killed him five fucking times! Yeah, it would be fine if we didn't have those previous battles where she should have easily been, you know, because the thing about PTSD triggers is that they don't, they, you don't, they don't just show up randomly. If that, if the trigger keeps showing up, she should still be having those triggers. Where were those the last three, five times? Not to mention that exposure to it. Now is this, now is it, why is it now all of a sudden it kicks in? Mm Mm-hmm. Not to mention that exposure to a consistent exposure to a trigger is part of what causes that trigger's effectiveness to go away, and how you partially come overcome parts of PTSD and other mental illnesses. The vibe, the vibe that I get between this and the and the whole and a lot of a lot of the stuff with how, that we talked about when it came to the characterization of Adam is sock is Sakamoto. Having having a having a um having an idea uh, once again having an idea but not understanding how to not understanding how to do it, um, because yeah, because with with um with Adam with Adam we have a case of not understanding how to do how to do the archetype of the military leader and when it comes to this particular incident, the uh, the idea is is Samus not is Samus having. Having met, having um, having PTSD from it, from what happened, to, having deeply rooted PTSD from what happened to her in her past. None and of these are comes, terrible ideas. Yeah, but here's here's where it comes back to the argument I've been making all this time: is that mm-hmm. Sakamoto, you know, I'll just come out and say it. Sakamoto's a sexist bastard. <laughs> I don't. I would normally say it in a situation like this, but I don't know how else to explain this. I actually. <laughs> I don't because, think it's sexism in the way that you think it is. Well, I it's, don't think it's intentional. I don't think it's it's a case of he's trying to be sexist. I just think he doesn't understand how to write a woman differently than just being a stereotype. Oh, he mm-hmm. she's emotional. She's easily you know she's weak. She's she does she needs a man to protect her. Again, none of this is intentional. It just ended up that way. Not quite. I I still think this this goes more towards the fact that again th- this is this is still uh suppositioned on the fact that that uh sakamoto is a control freak samus in many ways is literally uh m- closer to being his waifu than anyone else's <laughs> and he's imposing his ideals for what he sees in a waifu he's He's headcanoning his waifu. Um, <laughs> and now this is where you say headcanons get the headcanon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> people may argue, but he's the author. He's the one who wrote her. He's the one who created her. And I go, but he's not the one who characterized her. Yes, he's the author that, that, that may have wrote the character Samus as part of Metroid 1. But that character didn't have any character. She was just a avatar for you to go kill the Metroids and everything else. I liken it to, um, to the to the way to Gene Ro- to Gene Roddenberry's attitude on on Star Trek over the years, where everything is a utopia, even if you even if there's all this dumb bullshit going on elsewhere in the galaxy. Well, you, you have a you have a combination of that, and let's not forget for the first two seasons of TNG. He had this attitude of he was going to give the true vision of what Star Trek was in contrast to the in contrast to the films that he that he was very vocal about disliking the quote unquote militarization of Star Trek. If it looks like a navy, sounds like a navy, smells like a navy and quacks like a navy, it's a fucking navy. Hold on, hold on. 
I, I got a I got a hit a button for this one as well. Where is it? Here it is. Hey, that looks like a duck and it walks like a duck. <laughs> You're a fucking duck. Stop it. Mark fucking quack. Stop it. <laughs> and in the in that same in that same vein, while he may while Sakamoto may have may have cre- may have created it, may have cre- may have created the character of Samus. Um, the way that that character has evolved over over the years and with and with the input of other people is is something that is something that was completely outside of him and it's one it's one of those things that you ca- that you kind of ha- you kind of have to acknowledge that what what you what you may have cr- what you may have created and what people may have latched onto aren't necessarily the same in, in a sense his reaction and his wanting to say hey you guys don't know how Samus is. This is how she's supposed to be. That's akin to what a lot of developers and, and, and creators do today when it comes to people not understanding their characters or their mm-hmm. stories. And we don't like those people either. No. And when it com- when it comes to when it comes to the when it comes to this is why I, this is why I say the whole work the why um you have to take word of God with a with a particular grain of salt because, well, well, the create well cr- people who are creators are just as fallible as it as anyone else, and and sometimes that word of God can be can be fucking wrong. Um, I, however, just because word of God can be fucking wrong, is no reason to lean on the stupid fucking crutch called death of the author. Oh, I don't. I don't no. respect either of those. I, fu- I, I think I've made it clear. No. I am squarely in the middle between those extremes. Mm-hmm. Agre- yeah, agreed. But now the there are two there are two other plot lines that kind of that kind of show up and and nothing is done with them. One of the the other one that I do want to touch on is that it is that in Adam's squad there is what there is a mole. One person who's who's tr- who's trying to take them out, which is is very is very much in keeping with um with one of the big inspirations for Metroid, the Alien series. Mm-hmm. You know the whole the whole traitor among them, and the original in the original Alien that was Ash. Yep. But the the but if you're gonna if you're going to do that, um one I'm not entirely sure if this if this is the right game to do it in because that's the kind of thing that is best result. That's best resolved in a mystery entry, and two, ha- come up with a better name than the deleter. Uh, was that actually what they were called in Japanese too? I don't know. I don't know. And that that was that was essentially a code name that Sa- that Samus essentially gave the gave the potential assassin. Um. And then we then of course there's the whole thing of um Melissa Bergman and there and there supposedly being two of her one and and that whole thing that whole thing of her being an being a backup of of Mother Brain which ends up then ends up getting resolved when some more federation soldiers come in to do cl- come in to do cleanup and the whole the whole thing feels like the ending of the ending of a fir- of a first episode that you never see the follow up for. Yeah. Oh. And the when it comes to bo- when it comes to both of these the le- the um the whole the whole the whole the whole um backup of mo- backup of mother brain you could potentially do something like that but that's one of those things where so a character like Melissa Bergman needed to be introduced far earlier on because the idea of of a of a central of a central character who's somewhat helpful to you and ends up being re- ends up betraying you and being revealed as the bad guy, we've seen that plenty of times throughout the Final Fantasy series. We've e- we've even we've even seen it plenty of times in uh, in other in other means. However, when you introduce a character that late in and then and then they do the heel turn, it doesn't have this. It's not going to have the same level of impact. Simply because of the fact that this is a character that you've only gotten to know for a brief amount of time, and then it's revealed that they, that they, that they were that they were the true puppet master. That's once once again 
having an idea and not understanding how to do it. When you introduce a character that late, we're already kind of suspecting that they're going to be up to something by that mm-hmm. point. Of course, of course. Then when you when you realize that whole thing and the whole and the whole the whole MB the whole MB being mother, being mother brain, that's when that's when once again you end up rolling your eyes because because must symbolism. <laughs> Mother brain on wrong, the yeah. bottle ship. Babies cry. We've done this. We've Other done that joke already. M. Yeah. Yes, but it, but just like the symbolism in the in the actual game, it needs to be hammered into your head countless times. Yeah, it's a case of have we beat it in your head enough? Clang clang clang. Have we gotten it through to you yet? Clang clang. Stop! He's already dead. <laughs> when it, and I'd say the I I'd, I'd say because 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 of that the end because of because of all three of the because of all three of those plot lines um essentially essentially get essentially getting no real resolution um. I can't. One, I can't help. I can't help but wonder if there was consideration for a for a um, for an expansion episode before the before the game got thr- got critically thrashed. I don't know if the, I don't know if that's the case or not, but I could but I could buy it given how the game ends. And two, the the idea of I think I think the idea one of the ideas that Sakamoto had said is that he is that he wanted a metroid that felt like a movie um a little bit of a t- a little bit of a tip to future game developers stop trying to make your video games into movies nobody plays a video game for a movie Games well, journalists that Kojima too. gets railed on because, for God's sakes, you you literally will spend hours between gameplay. That's why why bother playing the game at that point if we're just going to be sitting there watching a movie? You're just going to box a popcorn and enjoy the show. I will. Like, get, I will. Um, like I know. Like po- I said, there's there's one type of people who who do play video games to watch movies. Their names are games journalists. Yeah. <laughs> at the very least, at the very least, with Koji. With um with Kojima, I think the I think the reason why I end up I end up giving him a pass when it comes to his his cut his cutscene use is because a lot of that is born from him being a genuine movie buff. Yeah, he's he's a, he's a very much a, a cinema fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, I mean the criticism is still valid though. It's just that because a lot of people will have that complaint about his work. A lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people will for will for certain. But I w- I would but. I would I would say that I would say that he that he has a better understanding of fi- of film than he's than he's given um, credit for because at the very least when it comes to him trying to do this whole oh it f- it feels like a movie um, it he actually he actually understands cinematography to do it within his damn cutscenes whereas a lot of people try to do that but end up really abusing shot reverse shot. Yeah, it's the problem with Kojima is his gameplay sucks. Hi, Death, Death Stranding, how you doing? Um, I will I will get to Death Stranding one one of these de- one of these days. Yeah, um, let's let's get back on the rails before I go too far off. Yeah, but but I'd I'd say I'd say the old, I would I would say it's very t- it's very telling in the af- in the aftermath that he he has not he has not taken a. Di- a directorial position at all since while he was involved with with um with the Metroid 2 remake and to a certain extent with Metroid Dread even though both of, even though the heavy lifting was handled by Mercury Steam um he was essentially he was essentially involved in both of those projects in an advisory role um to track all of his roles since other M Rhythm Heaven Fever as general producer, Kiki Trick as supervisor, Game & Wario as producer and game designer, Tomodachi Life as producer, Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix as general producer, Mi Tomo as producer, Metroid Prime Federation Force as special advisor, Metroid Samus Returns as producer, Famicom Detective Club, both episodes as original game design scenario supervision and producer, and Metroid Dread as producer. 
And we all know what producers actually do, right, guys? They sign checks. <laughs> <laughs> He's He was a glorified consultant. I don't think he was even that. Oh. And I, th I think... Th when it comes to um, now when it comes to Federation Force, I will I will I will um, play a little bit of devil's advocate on that. Federation Force as a game is a case of a decent game made at the wrong time. Yeah, released at the wrong time. Yeah, and up and up here. Uh, the fun the thing I find funny is that Reggie tr Reggie's attempt to defend the game uh, to defend the game is that he is that. They, is that they know that people want a solo Metroid, but they don't want to announce that, and they don't want to announce that, and then have people waiting. And then what? Ha and then what happened a few years later? They announced Metroid Prime Four. <laughs> what hasn't released yet? Which hasn't released yet, and there's been significant staff changes, so it may so it may be going through major rewrites as we speak. Um, yeah, it was given back to Retro Studios, and they started from restarted from the ground up. That announcement was made a while back, which um, makes me wonder how bad of the studio that handled it was. How bad were they botching it for the for Nintendo to go? Uh, yet yeah, no, we're not letting this out. Well, we're and fixing this. As a uh, as a side note, this comparison I always love to make: <clears throat> Yandere Simulator 1.0 released before Metroid Prime 4. <laughs> Well, yeah, it, it released, but have you seen the code? <laughs> yes, to Monk. To call it a mess would be an understatement. Monk, as someone who actually programs for fun, I look at that code, and I want to go find Yandev, and I want to make him suffer. <laughs> to that, I'd have to say, you know what? get in line. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a lot of coders out there on YouTube who have already said the exact same fucking thing. I think I have more interesting ways to make him suffer. Oh, I'm sure I'm sure you do, and I'm sure at least three of them violate the Geneva Accords. <laughs> Is brainwashing against the Geneva Accords? Yes. God damn it. I don't even have to guess. Yes. Especially, si especially since Yandev would technically be a non-combatant. God damn it, but I'm not a combatant either! That just makes you a criminal. <laughs> yeah, at this point, it's not a war crime. I'm fine. <laughs> you know, sometimes sometimes I have to wonder if you if if you are the long lost member of Fire Team Whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Zan's gone bye bye, Egon. What do you got? <laughs> I'm sorry, Monkey's currently beyond the capacity for rational thought. <laughs> Damn, I don't think I've ever heard you break that hard. And that's saying something. That was a good reference. Last team on the ledges, the lowest of the low. They'll fight for booze and chili, obrises and blow. Don't mind the distant screaming. It happens all the time. It's us. <laughs> God damn it, I fucked up. <laughs> Good job. Uh, gotta hit this on you. <laughs> Goes... <laughs> yeah, I d yeah, I deserve that. I... Especially, especially, especially since one of one of my favorite gags from that from that particular group is um. Professor Glock, Professor Ock, but he's but he's Professor Glock talking about Glocks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, what? So he's Arn Anderson now? <laughs> um, but getting getting back on the rails. Since we, I think I, when before we before we end up going into how we try and fix what's been what's been thoroughly broken. I do think I do think it's I do think it's as good enough of a time to. A to, ascer to ascertain some of the learning experiences from from other M that can be gleaned, I'd say I'd say the I'd say the first one is tr is um not to put a square one to be v to to me to have some to have 
when somebody has a strong vision, have someone there to who can yank their leash. <laughs> yeah, you, you kind of need like I, I t- the, the most apt comparison I can have is you need to have a Vince McMahon to yank the chain of the Vince Russo. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the same at the same at the same vein, um, when it comes when it comes to when it comes to the structure from the top down. You need to have. You need to still have that direction to say this is this is what we're doing. After a point, this is what we're doing. We're not. We're not adding. It, we're not adding any more. Any more pitches to this part of it. Mm-hmm. That way, you won't have the long ass meetings. The other. The <laughs> other issue is when you bring when you bring in a studio to work with, work within their strengths instead of forcing them into something that isn't in their strengths. Team Ninja's strength. Team Ninja's strengths is is le- is level based, high high octane action games. As well as well as as well as high as well as high speed fighting games. That's go. That is going to be their. That is going to be their strength. So let them de- let them develop a <clears throat> universal action combat system, and then build around that. That way, you can still have the exploration known to the known to be a. a Core identifier of Metroid games. Mm-hmm. The other, the other thing is, is when it comes to your person with a strong vision, make have them de- have them delegate duties to things that they're not going to be very good at, and make sure that they're able, able actually able to communicate said vision. Because just because you're a ga- just because you're a game di- just because you're a game director does not mean you're going to be the sole creative voice like a, like the director in a film. With the way game development works, you still need to relegate duties to specific fields, and this includes writing. The idea of somebody being a director slash writer is very rare because of the collaborat- because of the amount of moving parts that are involved in even simple game development. And obviously, the obviously the more complicated the game, the more moving parts you need, and thus. You need to do that relegate. You need to have that level of relegation. I'd say. I'd say if there. I'd say, this is especially the case where where I have to say, um, if you have an idea but you don't but you don't know how to convey it, hire a fucking writer. I realize that. I realize that sounds bla- That sounds ridiculously obvious, but I I don't see Sakamoto. Um, Writing novels anytime soon. Mm-hmm. <coughs> even, true. Even, even light novels, for that matter. Very true. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we've brought up the Metroid manga a handful of times, but um, I, I don't think he was, ha- I don't think he was all that hands-on with that project. Probably not. And I'd I'd say I'd say the I'd say the final I'd say the final thing that we can learn is um I will not miss motion controls. Uh, no, I don't think any of us will. Motion controls can be fun depending on a uh, context. Uh, looking at you, no more heroes. When done yeah, right, con- they can be amazing. But context. not many games did it right. <laughs> context. I know exactly where you're going with Mister Recharge Your Beam Saber. Yeah, you know what you're talking on, about. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Fuck you. They fooling us. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, to be honest, the uh, the best part of the motion controls for No More Heroes for me is the kills. That's true. Those mm-hmm. kills. Some of those kills can be re- that feeling of just like go slashing across the screen and basically you know seeing him slice someone in half. Yeah, I'll give him that one. Mm-hmm. Then the second comes with a uh, with my recharge. <laughs> well, at least he's honest about it. Mm-hmm. But I think it, I think it's very telling that early that even though the even though the Switch technically has motion controls, um, the any any the the last major game on it that used motion controls was Arms, which was a launch title. Most of the most of the games that are coming out on the that have been coming out on the Switch for the last few years do not use motion controls. And I think that is telling. Not that they don't use motion controls. It's that motion controls are in the dev kit. And sometimes even added in. But all uh, controller gamepad controls are still included. 
Yeah. Um, we see th- we actually see this with No More Heroes three. Mm-hmm. But he, but it's but even No More Heroes three is a minority these days. Yes. Yes. And I I I think it I think it's safe to say that the mo- that the um, motion control feeding frenzy that we had to put up with in the in the um er, in the early half of the 2010s is more or less dead. I think and, and I think it's in, I think not any gonna of be it's, missed. it's not going to be missed and and, and um, anybody who's still a diehard for it has moved on to VR. And since VR is its own is its own proprietary console with its own proprietary set of games, it is a classic case of nomfop. We do not need a virtual boy too, thank you very much. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, <laughs> no, I don't I don't even think I don't I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Nintendo has done all they can to refuse to acknowledge that it exists. I don't yeah. know. With the way Nintendo does things, I wouldn't be surprised if the next console they put out is a uh, is a hybrid home portable like this one, uh, with a uh, with the ability to strap it to your fucking face. Well, so that they can jump on the VR trend. I think by that exactly. point, the VR trend will have will have cooled off. It's already yeah, but, starting to really. Yeah, but yeah, but you, you you know Nintendo. Sometimes they like to jump on things that are already unpopular, like DMCAing every streamer that there is. Well, in that case, in that regard, they're in good company with Atlas. <laughs> but but given, but it's it's but even with all, even with all of that, um, I do. The way that Sakamoto has ta- has talked has talked in the aftermath of Other M does give me the vibe that he is that he's been humbled by that he's been humbled by the experience. Um, but even but even with that, I'm not I'm not necessarily willing to give him another chance. I do th- I do think that be- that being the suggestion slash ideas guy is gonna is gonna be the best position he'll he'll be able to get for the foreseeable future. Which Sim- suits yeah. him just fine. Mm-hmm. That's his strength. It's Nintendo playing to his strengths. Yeah. Yeah, it's. <sighs> but with but with that said, let's shift let's shift the gears a little bit and this and discuss how and discuss how we would how we would try and repair it. So to put to mm-hmm. to once again to once again steal a line from the from the man formerly known as Plumpy. <laughs> let us have a go. <laughs> So, uh, I, 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 I need to get this out because I've been holding this in since you said we'll get to the reco- since, since we'll get to the repairs later. <clears throat> Changing the entire equipment dynamic so that it isn't. Can I use my things now, please? K, thanks. Bye, please, sir. Yes, sir. Have some more, sir. Oh, um, I, 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 um, we'll get, we'll get to. I know you. I know you've been holding off on that, and I know that's burning a hole in your pocket. But all th- all things in time, because there's a certain way that I want to structure this. I have pockets left. <laughs> of co- of course you of course you have pockets left. You managed to write. You managed to raid Rob Liefeld's wardrobe. You've got pouches for days. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a better joke than talking about a prison pocket. But okay. Um. Uh, Look, I'm not look, I'm not going to I'm not going to bring up the watch story from Pulp Fiction. That's good. That's not my fetish. <laughs> not my cow, not my farm, not my pig to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what what next are you going to tell me you willingly played Redneck Rampage? Redneck Rampage? No, but Once I have I willingly you played how old we are. <laughs> Yes, yes. No. But I have willingly played Immortal Redneck. Good game. Um, I'm not. Um, that's an. It's another case of rails. But I. I want to split this. I want to split this particular approach when it comes to fixing something that's borderline a reconstruction into two halves. The first half is is how we is how we'd fix the gameplay sandbox, and the second half is how we'd fix the narrative end of the affair. Okay, and I, I want to start with the gameplay part of it because, given given the gameplay fo- given the gameplay centric narrative of Nintendo games, and given the fact that that's the, that's going to be the most front loaded part of this, it's the thing that we should tackle first. All right. Now, um, I think uh, right off the top of the bat, I think we could all agree: get rid of the first person mode. Yes. No. Oh. Go ahead. No. Really. 
Okay. I think that what we do instead is we make the first person mode easy to access and just as mobile as the third person mode, a la Prime, because this game was intended to appeal to both audiences. And we just we give it the Prime UI when you're in first person. I'd you I'd get... step I'd take one step further. Okay. Um this this idea of only using the Wii remote, we kill that. No, that's dead. gone. Yeah, that's dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We, I think we all agree. Kill that that's, shit. That's, that's why I said uh, it, make it as mobile as when you are in third person. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you put this w this alleged other M remake we are now making, um, <clears throat> why don't we just call it other F so we can be as blatant as <laughs> Sakamoto? <laughs> um, all right, well, let, let me ask a question here, Zan, if we were going to go down this road. Okay. What use would the first person mode then have aside from just being a, a different way to play? Finding explorable areas. Remember that this, the, the camera angles in the game are semi fixed. Going into first person mode allows you to find uh, different explorable areas, different collectibles that might be hidden behind objects. Uh, the scan visor could, come, could make a comeback for that search mode and it wouldn't be nearly as fucking anal. On top of that, <laughs> On top of that, it would give people a different way to just experiment with play. Maybe they don't want to play third person. <clears throat> Maybe they want to just play a, a first person experience. They, you, you could go into the options menu, change it from hold button for first person to toggle, and you toggle on first person, and now you're playing an extremely mobile, fast action, uh, first person uh, Metroid Prime almost. There's now endless I reasons like to do this. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with that, and I like the idea in and of itself, but I also have to think a little realistically here. That would work because Team Ninja ain't going to be able to do that. That's not their forte. And the whole reason Nintendo went with this style is because they couldn't replicate that. This was retro, that was Retro Studios thing. This would require a third. And like we said earlier, that's a bad idea. Um, Why uh, I was suggesting just ditch the altogether because it's clear neither of these studios can do it. Why even bother? First, uh, Shades, you're going Robotty again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, already? Uh-huh. And, uh, and second, that's why uh, you have Team Retro. You have the Retro team in the background. You the can, problem you can... was I think, they, uh, I think there was a reason why they weren't going with Retro at that point. Yes, but we are remaking. We don't have to be constrained by this, the limitations of that time. And we do have to still be realistic about things here. Well, That's we've always been pretty good about let's, keeping it yeah, in realistic setting. Within, within um, whenever we've done reconstructions, we try, we try and st we try and stick as close to what's presented, just re just recontextualizing little bits to um, to build the snowball down the hill. Um. Well, then just take what you have already had in the Prime series and surgically implant it if you can. That is f that is far easier sa said than done, especially especially when you're de especially um, when you're when you're dealing with when you're dealing with um, programming that was probably written in in another um, in another language. Um, it's the r I'm remi I'm reminded of when um, when Inferno Plus decided to do decided to do that extensive uh, multiplayer mod for. Um, Dark Souls, and he, and he had to he had to he had to he had to come up with a whole new program called Moon Rune Demolisher, just so he could translate the sh the shortcuts in the code into English. <laughs> and you, if if you were if you were to try and transplant some of some of the code from re some of the code from Retro Studios, you'd end up having the reverse issue where you'd ha you'd probably have a whole lot of a whole lot of co a whole lot of programming notes and the like written in English, and given those and given it to people who probably don't speak English. Yeah, I, I I like your ambition, and again, if if we could if there realistically we could do those kind of things that you're talking about, I'd be all for it. But the the studios we're dealing with don't have that ability, and bringing in any other studio, even one that we, they used to work with, isn't gonna work out very well in the end. Yeah, the well. The, limit but the limitation that I'm going with on this is that this is still solely a collaboration between Nintendo and Team Ninja, and instead of, instead of trying to force the 
we we already we already crit, we already criticized the fact that Team Ninja was working against working against their strengths. So I think a key thing with this reconstruction is the fact that is the fact that we should be playing to the respective strengths of of both studios. Problem there is then you're not going to end up with a Metroid game. That is that is that is full stop. What's going to happen? Team Ninja's strengths are high octane action in an extremely linear level based system. You have just destroyed the the, the Metroid uh, the Metroid identity doing so. The, uh, the, there has to be. He might be on. He might be. He might be mm -hmm. right about this. I don't think that, there's any way to. I think this is a case where we may. I think the only way to truly fix it is to get T T Ninja out of the equation and just nuke the whole thing. As e as easy as oh, as easy as that. It, remind um, could you remind me what why did they why did they choose to not go with Retro Studio choose to part ways with Retro Studios after three? No one knows. If there is if there and isn't Nintendo a likes to keep coy. If there isn't a strong, if there isn't a strong enough reason, and given given the fact that they ended up coming crawling back to Retro Studios, give, given the last announcement with um, Prime Four, I I see no as even though there's going to be logistical problems, especially with the language barrier, um, I do see I do see no reason why 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 having why having three we're, I think we're going to have to have um, those have three studios. Working on working on it, even though Nint even though Nintendo would mostly be in an in, in advisory role in this in this particular case, they'd be more distributor and publisher than actual developer. Yes, and to be honest, Team Ninja's already done something like that at this point with Nintendo in Hyrule Warriors and their collaboration with Omega Force, mm -hmm. having. Team Ninja work on what they're good at, and Omega Force work on what they're good at, and Nintendo providing the IP and distribution and publishing worked really fucking well. It's worked well for the entire Hyrule Warriors series. So I see no reason why having Retro do what they're good at, Team Ninja do what they're good at, and Nintendo provide the IP can't be used in this case as well. It, it, especially yeah. since if we just play to Team Ninja's strengths, you'll lose the Metroid identity. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think uh, Zans gets the win on this one because I've just yeah. um, I've been doing some digging. N N Nintendo never stopped working with Retro. I think Retro just was tired of working on Metroid because they went on to move. They went on to do stuff like the Donkey Kong Country Returns series, Mario Kart Seven. And a couple of other games, and then of course come back for Metroid Prime Force. So I think what it was was just Retro wanted to do something different. So yeah. that might be the only reason why we didn't have them back for uh, the next Metroid game. But or maybe Sakamoto just didn't like the Prime series. There's also that. Considering how much he wanted to try to keep the Prime, how much he's tried to keep the Prime series out of canon, even though it fits perfectly within it. Hell, game trailers even was able to make a continuity timeline with it. Yeah. I, I think we could safely say that yeah, Sakamoto just didn't want that to be part of the thing. You know, um, one one thing that one thing that I ended up I ended up going back to to kind to kind of um, to kind of get myself in the mindset mm -hmm. is I I could I could see a degree of a degree of sour grapes, especially given how the Prime games were selling like gank were were vastly outselling the GBA titles at the time. Yeah. I mean, Sakamoto G probably had a little bit of a resentment for that. Yeah, it's not something that it's not mm -hmm. something that he's going to outright say. And um, for some weird for some weird reason, I ended up being reminded of the infamous um, sour grapes letter that um, that Winchester made after after John Moses Browning left. <laughs> I don't want to now. Forgotten Weapons has done has done a full, has done a detailed breakdown on this letter. That is a case of hindsight being a motherfucker. But it was it was basically, but short version, Browning was Browning was getting was getting fed up of wor of working with Win of working with Winchester and not getting a what he what he felt was a sufficient amount of royalties. So he so um he and especially especially when it came to his patents, so he ended up leaving, going to FN, and Winchester wrote a wrote a let wrote a letter, saying oh we. Going with saying, 
basically we don't we don't need we don't need Browning. We've got plenty we've got plenty of really good products coming down the coming down the road without him. And then Browning created the greatest round ever known to man. Which a grenade propelled projectile called the 50 BMG. Which which could have been which could which could have been Winchesters and they could have made money off of that, but they but but in, but instead somebody else did, which is which is why the sour grapes letter has become so infamous. And uh and so this is likely the same the same issue with Sakamoto saying good riddance retro we don't need you or saying retro stay out of this we've got someone else. Mm-hmm. Um and <laughs> and then retro went on to make uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns which was also which also did gangbusters while other anime ended up being a uh, bit of a joke. Yeah. Time time heals all wounds, but that's a pretty large burn there, Sakamoto. Sir, you didn't need to go to a Japanese burn ward. <laughs> <laughs> so, because because we can include Retro and Team Ninja in this to preserve the Metroid identity, keeping both modes in is viable. Mm-hmm. We can put it on a system that has controllers, or we can use the Pro Controller on the Wii. I don't care what we use, but that way you have mm-hmm. mobility in both forms, and you have a reason to use both forms. Hell, you could have the the same environmental storytelling. Mm-hmm. The whole scan everything with the scan visor, find out cool little details about this here and this there. Hell, you could there could be times where you're where you're around the other uh, Federation members and you could scan them and get little profiles and, and bios and shit. Something and, something else that I that I wanted to suggest when it came to the use of um, first per, of first person, because I do, I do want to know one thing we're making clear since we have an expanded control setup. Um, the idea that the idea that you have to use first person to use rockets, we're not doing. No, that. no, no. Oh, you don't fuck use that. that. No. But the but the approach I was con- I was considering is that you is that you would want you would want to be in you would want to be in first person in order in order to more precisely target certain body parts of enemies. Totally. Yeah. That could totally be a reason to use first person mode. I mean, it isn't necessary. You can still defeat an enemy using just the normal combat scheme in third person. Mm-hmm. But if you more do some more precise targeting, you might get some easier weakening or put them in the the finisher state really easily. The other thing that I was the other thing that I was considering is that and the, and this might be this might be pushing things a bit is that what is that in in for in first person when you're doing first person in combat you do have you do have a bit of slowing down because the the kind of speeds that you can do in first person versus third person are not going to be exactly the same yeah no i i think you could use first person for combat areas mm-hmm. where you're fighting enemies in like arenas and stuff like that especially boss fights mm-hmm. Where you know you don't want to you know you can have a, maybe a quick strafe jump, but you're not going to be moving it super fast because you're going to be focused on targeting enemies. Mm-hmm. Whereas when you're in like hallways and stuff, you might be better off just going in third person, so you can focus on speed and just getting through areas. Maybe be able to use, that's where you can use stuff like the speed booster and just blaze through everything. Mm-hmm. Now, when it com- when it comes to when it comes to think the other um the of uh, with with the third person combat they did it they did add the whole they did add their own ver- their own version of of the of the kind of enhanced dodge that would be that would be perfected in bayonetta mm-hmm. um and i'm per- i'm perfectly f- i'm perfectly fine with using that in in third person because with the whole thing of do- of dodging it of dodging and shooting the way it's done um I do feel that I do feel that should be a dance, and that brings me to one other to one thing that I think is crucial. Um, and because ba- this is one of the, this is one of the um, underrated innovations in Bayonetta that I, that I that you do end up mi- you do end up missing when you go when you go to other action games. Dodge cancels animations. There's one other action game that does that, Monk, and. At least one in on the top of my head, and that is Monster Hunter. Either, either way, I don't I don't think I'm wrong in the se- in the sense that you don't you don't notice it when you're when you're in the, when the heat of the moment, but when you're playing another action game, you definitely miss it. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And 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 we can give the same uh, animation cancel 
uh, to the Dodge for our other M remake. Yeah. Um, one particular thing that that some people had issues with is the is the is the whole ability to recharge missiles, which personally I'm 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 fine with I'm fine with getting rid of that. Especially especially since in doing in doing that, you have you have far less of an inclination to to explore. Or to, mm-hmm. or to get or to get or to get certain power ups. Yeah. There's, there, there's been a th- there's been a thing for the longest time of beating enemies to get to get power ups for for health or for, or for mi- or for missiles or in or in some cases bombs. Yeah. Um, in that in that same in that same vein, I would also ha- I think I think um I think we'd also need to have a way to make the morph ball. Be be some be somewhat viable in combat, especially since in the two D games you do have you do have to use the morph ball in combat. Prime games as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Prime games actually were really good at making morph ball essential in combat. The fact that we've pulled Retro Studios in is going to naturally let the morph ball become more combat based. Mm-hmm. I think in third person mode. Which is where you're going to see the most ball, morph ball most often occur. Mm-hmm. Like people are going to probably transform to the morph ball more off, more often when they're in third person mode than in first. Um, I could see there being ways, little secret ways to combo in things like morph ball bombs and such. Mm-hmm. There is because because of because of her appearance in um in brawl. There is one there is one other thing I had. I had been I've been kicking around in the back of my head for the longest time, and that is and that is fine and that is the idea because I the idea of of switching between switching between the switching between a a melee a melee focused zero suit and a range and a range focused power suit is some is something that I that I found kind of intriguing. It was a very interesting dynamic, but I understand why they separated the two due to the fact that a uh... They were starting to separate the transformative fire uh, of fighters later on, allegedly due to constraints. But it made more sense to separate them just because of playstyle. Yeah. Um, but I, I think in, I think in this regard, I would I wouldn't be opposed to to utilizing it, just so, just so that because one of the mantras that I have with this with this proposition is ev- is everything having some deg- some degree of use. So. The thing I'm I'm now questioning is what does the power suit or, or what does what does the zero suit afford Samus in this situation that the power suit does not? I would I would I would argue I would argue that the that with this particular setup um, the pow, the power suit the I would probably I would there's a couple there's a couple ways to look at it. Um one is that one is the idea that the that the um, power suit d- ha- has cer- has a bit of a ceiling when it comes to its maneuverability versus the zero suit, especially when it comes to dodging. Okay, so an enhanced dodge window and other things having to do with the zero suit. Yeah. All right. At the expense of defense and health, clearly, because mm-hmm. you're going to, you, without the power suit, you're going to have less less room for energy tanks, and you're also going to be taking more damage. Yeah, yeah. Also, uh, for exploration, you could have certain hallways that not even the morph ball could pass through, but they're thin enough that in zero suit form, you could sl- you could slide through them, mm-hmm. or uh, or under them, crawl under them in your military crawl. Yeah. That's what I was thinking, getting at. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Those those feel more like loading gates than anything, but I understand why they exist. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> we could see or that having, it, them, having like certain secret areas, like certain item locations, being those kind of things. You could you could do stuff with that. Yeah. Yeah. Could, would it be easier to shine spark in the zero suit? I'd say yes. The um, I the. A mantra that I a mantra that I'd say would apply very much to to the way the zero suit would be designed is high risk, high reward. Hard mode. Got it. Here's the problem, though. Here, here's the problem I have to have because 
for shine sparking, you need the speed booster, and that's a power suit item. Yeah, that that uh, that does that does provoke an, that does provoke a bit of an issue. Her um, boots have jets on them. <laughs> yeah, but that's still not a speed booster. I right? that does that's not the same thing. The... <laughs> like... You could say it is. Uh, no, I couldn't because they're they're, they're tiny ass little boots versus what is essentially like, especially with the way it was presented in another M, a giant jet uh, thing on her back. Yeah, but Other M is the one that started the Jets thing. That was always kind of weird. Um, the, the speed booster for prior to that was just something that in, uh, allowed you to increase the movement speed of the power suit to ludicrous proportions. Yeah, so, but again, at the end of the day, that means the Zero suit couldn't use it, so... Still kind of have to make that argument. Yeah, the the other... But one of the other... One of the other things... Speak. One of the other things that I that I wanted to bring up with a with a melee focused zero suit is the is the idea is the idea of utilizing that utilizing this to kind to kind of to kind of lean into the combo systems that Team Ninja is known for. Yeah, I could see that. So that you have uh, more incentive to to do some really weird and crazy combo stuff mm -hmm. oh and i do th i do think that it i wouldn't i wouldn't have it i wouldn't have it um i wouldn't have it ranged uh melee only but but the more po but it's a case of the more powerful stuff being either me being either melee or ranged depending on whether depending on which suit you're using um there's there's also the possibility that get that um you could e you could easily have it that get that certain that cer that certain envi that certain environments might have it that where the where utilizing the power suit might might put might put you at a bit of a disadvantage so you can ha you can have it where you where you do have to you do have to switch around I don't want to I wouldn't want to have it where somebody could go through this entire hypothetical with just the with just the power suit. Of course, also go, although going through although going through the zero suit with this approach um, might make for, might make for interesting challenge runs, and we know we know people love those. <laughs> outside outside or, of the outside of the power suit, though, you lose things like the spin attack or the the uh, uh, screw attack and the space jump. Yeah. Uh, Plus, there's the issue of one particular area where. Having the power suit kind of was necessary, especially with a certain armor upgrade. We kind of have avoided that elephant in the room, haven't we? Yeah. So can I turn on my suit? Can, can I turn on my suit in order to allow it to not let me melt to death? Well, I think I think when it comes to I, when it comes to that, I'm, I'm debating about whether or not I'm um, of two minds whether or not we cover that now or cover that when we get into. Actually, you know what, Fog, we may as well cover that now. <laughs> and um, now we yeah. get to my second idea. So, we know that the bottle ship, for all intents and purposes, until she got inside it, looks like a, de a decommissioned civilian space facility. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to think that this is a military or even secret military uh, facility, especially since it's using a common stress signal called baby's cry i say that rather than you're not allowed to use all that stuff because you could blow this place to high hell lady uh because this is such a weird secret facility some point after entrance soon after um the hidden security systems that would be in a hidden experimental research center of this level uh detect all of her tech as unauthorized and uh and unallowed because it's not part of federation military standard and strips her of it like legitimately this is this is a very large powered facility mm -hmm. it, it achieves the same effect of stripping her of power without giving the keys to a guy and her already having those powers and being able to just turn them on anytime she wants and the other part of that is she has to go retrieve security fragments now from place to place to place to get those things 
back. I know some It'll, people it, might say that's a stretch, but let's be honest. There have been um, there have, there have been more there have been more egregious examples of really stretching how how Sam, how Samus ends up go, ends up depowering down down to the base power suit. I'd say in I'd some say, hey, prime one. How you doing? Yeah. In in some case, it, it well actually uh, we already have an example of something like this happening with the phase on suit. She she had to have her suit completely reconfigured for phase on. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, uh, but then we also have the fact that there are plenty of games that just go, no, you have no powers at the beginning of this game because there's no explanation. Yeah, again, Prime One being the she bonks her head a little too hard, and all of a sudden all her stuff shuts down. I'm sorry, I still will never let that one go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in this one, since this is a super top secret bioweapon research facility in which they are rebreeding the Metroids, have a copy of Mother Brain as an AI, and this place has wiped out every human besides Madeline Bergman? Um, I can see an, ex- an advanced facility of this type also having anti-Samus weaponry, simply because the Federation, as much as they love her, as much as she gets shit done, as much as she uh, has done everything for them, she's a bounty hunter. She's not under their control or even their governance. She's slightly extrajudicial. Mm-hmm. No there could government. There a day where she could become a threat, and they need to be make sure they're ready for when that day comes. And- exactly. There's no way any government, including the Galactic Federation, is going to allow someone like Samus Aran to exist without trying to design countermeasures. So the bottle ship could have some of these partially experimental incomplete countermeasures that strip the power suit down to base. Yeah. And I would I would say I would say that cuz w- when you look at the flashback sequences she already ha- um even in her even in her soldier days she was already she was already in the at the very least the zero suit. So it, it wouldn't be too much of a stretch that 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 G Fed knew uh, knew about the knew about the tech that she ha- that she has integrated with her. Probably tried to see if they could replicate it and failed. And um, it's Chozo, so they can't really use it anyway. And the but the um, but the thing that the thing that I'm getting at is what is upon is upon arriving. There were there um there were probably there were probably some vo- it probably takes advantage of some voluntary countermeasures that were placed on her when she enlisted. Or um, because Mother Brain's AI has taken over the ship, and it is a copy of Mother Brain, who has faced Samus before. Um, She knows that Samus is very powerful, especially since this happened literally right after Super Metroid. Mm -hmm. Um, And she's just like, oh yeah, Normally you could get through this security checkpoint no problem because it's basically just shut down, but I'm going to turn it on and here's some additional security protocols that are specifically anti-Samus Aran. Yeah. Now, when it comes when it comes to when it comes to do when it comes and I I'd say I'd say in I'd say in that re- in that regard the the areas where the areas where you'd get where you would get uh, where you would get upgrades Usually, ha- usually have some sort of um, some sort of of computer with with the proto- with the bypass protocols. That yeah, is a, that is a little bit ge- that is a little bit gamey, but I'd say I'd say I'd say I'd be willing to buy that a little bit easier than say a Chozo shrine just happening to be on the in this place or happening to be on this planet. Yeah, in the bottle in the bottle ship, I don't think there'd be any more Chozo shrines, considering the planets that she's been on where they exist have a. Uh... All, almost all of them are gone. <laughs> um, yeah, like and, said, she has a habit of uh, leaving leaving planets as nothing but a uh, nothing but a mess of uh, asteroids by the time she's done, even if um, she yeah. doesn't intend to be. And, and then for the smaller upgrades, such as the additional energy tanks, the additional missile tanks, etc., um, smaller terminals hidden away in little corners, just like they've always fucking been. Mm-hmm. Go explore, find these tiny terminals, get an extra energy tank. There you go. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Now, now we've co- now, I'd I'd say I'd say that co- I'd say that covers the the um 
the bulk of the bulk of the things. One, there is one particular avenue that was brought that was brought in through through retro that I'm cu I'm curious if you guys would do, would do the same, and that is a lot. Instead of instead of doing a lin instead of doing linear upgrades when it came when it came to when it came to your beam weapons, um, it had it had subtypes. Um, it, the subtypes were uh, somewhat there in uh, the Metroid Two remake mm -hmm. as well. You didn't they weren't a straight linear upgrade system until you got to I believe the wave beam where it just combined everything and hey bada bing bada boom yeah. Um, do you, th I do, th I do think that, t I do think that taking, taking that, taking that, taking the sub, taking the, um, beam subtypes approach would probably bet, would probably better serve our sandbox, especially since it's an avenue where you can have a bit more, um, expression. Yeah, and you can play around and mm -hmm. because there are Metroids here and ice beam's going to be useful and... Mm -hmm. There's there's a bunch of different things that can, that can be done toyed around with, yeah. um, with the with the with a side beam system, mm -hmm. which I always liked about the Prime. Oh, choose one of your beams, go for it. Yeah. Now, and I and I'd I'd say I'd say this applies just I'd say this applies just as much to the um, missiles. <laughs> Ice missiles, super missiles, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Uh, and. But that that brings us to the to the other half of the equation, that being the narrative part. Now we've um because of, because of how we do these things, we do we there there are um there are when it comes to some of the story beats, we do have to try and try and keep some of them. But I'm still I'm still <laughs> nuking PTS Samus. The PTSD oh, yeah. Samus thing that's that's getting nuke. We can um we don't lo we don't lose anything by ha by losing that. But yeah. some but some of the other avenues I think I think we I think we can still keep. We just have to recontextualize them. So we already we already kind of ha we already kind of have a um we already can we already kind of have a dec a decent setup at the very least. A a a, a distress signal is a dis the baby's cry distress signal is picked up when Samus arrives at the bottle ship. She ends up she ends up finding her 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 old com her old comrades when she when she was when she was still a Federation soldier. Except uh, I'm gonna throw in a I'm gonna throw in a curve on this one mm -hmm. because not only are the Federation there, but so is Madeline. Let's introduce her from the off. To basically set everything into motion, Madeline, Madeline she, acting as a as a as a um, science advisor for the group. Exactly. That and she's the one that basically says, "Here, we're just gonna do a quick scan. Everything seems good." All of a sudden, she active she secretly activates the anti Samus tech that that Xanatrix brought up earlier, mm -hmm. and and acts like, wait, "Wait, what's going on? This shouldn't be active. What's going on here?" Even though she technically did it herself. You know, kind of. You know, she. We won't see that, but kind of set that little game into motion. Mm -hmm. Um. And the. And um. When it comes, I would I would say, when it comes when it comes to when it comes to the most of the crew, there's not a whole lot that we'd need to change. The the pro the primary and the primary end of changes, would cut would come from would come in the form of how we of how we treat Adam. Yeah. Um. Well, because because at this point fusion is a thing. Mm -hmm. And we know that Adam was someone important in Samus's life. We need to show, not tell, mm -hmm. that importance. Um whether it's through Adam treating her a little differently, or her acting a little differently around him, or both, than he would with a normal soldier, um, is probably the best best path. They both don't know how to act around each other after not seeing each other for years at this mm -hmm. point, most likely. Um, but their dynamic is still there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
I, I would say have Adam be a little, a slightly tad bit more casual with Samus while still being a military guy. He's still focused on the mission. Maybe at first he's very stoic, but very quickly, like we have a scene where the two of them are talking alone away from everything and they can't hear each other. No one else can hear them. And he kind of starts, he kind of immediately loosens up a little bit mm -hmm. to kind of show that he's still got that connection with her. And that's when you can cue in flashbacks to their past where he did the same thing even more so then. I would, um, one particular, one particular thing that I, that I think, I think if, I think if there's going to be any sort of focus on Samus's past, even, even to, even to, a, even to a secondary degree, there's one elephant in the room that has to be answered if that's going to be done. And that is the reasoning why Samus Samus left um, Samus left the the military and became a bounty hunter. And there there's a couple there's a couple of ways you can go about it. One it, one is that the parting was amiable. Two is two is that so, is that something ended up happening to not break the relationship that she has with Adam, but definitely strain it, which makes which makes this reunion all the more awkward. Yeah, which, I think the latter one would be better with storytelling in the long run. Maybe have the story be there kind of... Like, let's say... Let's, let's throw this idea. Mm -hmm. Let's say there was some kind of event in their past that did cause that strain. But... The reason the strain happened is because neither of them understood the other side's uh, actions. Mm -hmm. Samus did, you know, uh, Adam gave an order that Samus didn't understand, and Samus did something that was actually the right thing to do, but Adam didn't catch that, didn't mm -hmm. realize that. So those two kind of come to come to odds of that. Yeah. This and the story throughout this game is these two finally starting to understand each other a little bit as the game goes on. I am. Which I am tempted to. Which will lead to the reconciliation, right at the point Adam decides to sacrifice himself. Yeah, I, I am, I, I am of, I do have a strong feeling that the that the the approach that um when it comes to, when it comes to what that exactly was, I get the feeling it should in some regard involve the space pirates. Yeah. I think that kind of goes without saying, really, because mm -hmm. it would make the most sense. I mean, Samus has a deep-seated hatred of the space pirates for what they did to her family, and Adam doesn't. Maybe, maybe, maybe he kind of he does to some extent understand, but maybe he doesn't understand to just how deep that goes. I think i'd i'd act i'd i'd actually go, i'd actually posit that he he under he understands pro probably even sympathizes. But at but at the same but at the same time, um. Go but at the same time you can't you you can't ju you can't just go you can't just go out and do and and do per and do personal vendettas otherwise you end up getting more people hurt. Right. So that's why I'm saying like what she does ends up being the right thing to do. It actually ends up saving lives, but because it goes against his orders and he doesn't realize how what his, that his orders would have been wrong. Those two come to blows. Mm -hmm. uh, and to for, this is just, this is just me, but when but inevitably inevitably when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to that particular angle, um, given given that given the given that we're dealing with a parent and child relationship, um. I think it's I think it's inevitable that there is that there is the equivalent of a fa of a family argument, but in that in that particular scene in that particular scene, I don't know why, but I visualize Sa uh, Samus arguing with him while in while in the zero suit, not not in the not in the power suit. Just the just... Uh, show, uh, uh, the uh, I'd say there's there's a bit of symbolism there, which this game's already <laughs> full of anyway. So let's fucking go for it. <laughs> it's her basically bearing it, you know, in a sense, you know, pun not intended, bearing it all. Mm -hmm. She's bearing her soul to him with so without any any armor. Mm -hmm. No, she's showing she's be she's vulnerable with him, and he needs, but he doesn't see that. 
Yeah. Also, also, this should be obvious, but I but I wouldn't I wouldn't make her so damn short. <laughs> uh, no, she's standing. She's taller than him. Mm -hmm. Period. Maybe not by much, but enough. Yeah. And I would say I would say that I would say that in the in the in the process of, when it come when it come that brings us to the t to um one of to one of the other um. One of the other one of the other storylines that shows up and gets dropped, and that is that among that among among him among them is a traitor. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, we can't call an emer we can't call an emergency meeting to see who gets ejected. <laughs> Why? Hold on. Why, monk? <laughs> Simple. So I could do this. But in the but given what you given what you mentioned with with um bringing Melissa on very er, very early and I'd and um I'd actually go I actually go with the idea that um add that that you can you kind of have a bit of a you kind of have a bit of a good cop bad cop situation in terms of in terms of who's giving or who's giving orders or in, or intel the good cop in this situation is Adam the bad cop in this situation is Melissa. Yeah, whenever Adam gives her directions or orders, it usually ends up leading to something good, most like more often than not probably an upgrade or a bypass. Mm -hmm. But whenever Melissa gives an or gives information or direction, it always it almost always ends up leading to a trap. Either either a trap, a boss fight or be, or um or something along those lines. I am I am kind of taking a bit of a a bit of a note from System Shock 2. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I see it. I see it. Which she she she's basically showed Anne. <laughs> yeah. Which in in that in that same regard, speaking of, speaking of that, um, as much as as much as I've been critical of the abuse of journal entries in in games, I think, I think a, I think a game like Metroid is the per, is the perfect place to do that kind of thing. Since again, going back to the scan visor. Both with both with the scan visor and just and just going around to different facilities and finding, finding finding journals. Um, it's also it's also a good as good of an opportunity to um, to d to do the to do these optional in, in save points do these optional reflection scenes. Where you ha where just in a, in a way to in a way to kind of have Samus do. Up, do a bit of do a bit of introspection without it breaking the without it breaking the flow. Are, are yeah. these scenes that there are these scenes that you can access at save points. Some of them going over her, some of them going over her past, some of them reflecting on what on what's been happening in the story so far. But it's it's still it is still it is still exploring Samus as a character without without having these massive breaks. Yeah. Again, this is this a bit Captain's Log esque? Yeah, but I'd say this is the best way to do it, especially since it it'd be a good it's a good way to catch you up to speed. If say you pick the game up, then then drop it for a little while and then come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a good way to jump you right back into those things. Mm -hmm. Actually, I just had a th I just had an idea for a big moment near the end because at some point Samus is going to figure out Melissa's game. Yeah. And there is still the other big thing we have to fix, being the Ridley fight. Mm -hmm. Let's combine those two action elements into one big moment. Allow me to set the scene for you, ladies and gentlemen. Go right ahead. Samus has started to piece together that Melissa is not who she says she is. That there is more going on. She learns about MB, she learns about all that other stuff. And has finally pieced together that Melissa is Mother Brain, mm -hmm. and goes to confront her. Well, and, and and at this time, time we've been seeing that little puffball thing floating around. Mm -hmm. Like we 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 can't, we're gonna keep that because mm -hmm. that was an interesting setup for that. Mm -hmm. Mel Melissa then basically says, "Well, guess I couldn't keep the game up forever. Now could I?" Starts gloating, starts bragging, starts you know spouting off her plan like any good villain does. Mm -hmm. 
And this is when Adam shows up to confront her as well, overhearing all of this and going, okay, that's it, I'm taking you in. Mm-hmm. However, of course, being that she's Mother Brain, she's able to toss him aside, and they, and they end up in the same pit room that we saw in, other M, in the actual game. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you know, I have my own ways of dealing with trouble like yours. And that's when we see the little puffball shows up. Of course, it gets knocked aside, gets into the lava, and out comes Ridley. Now, here's where we can have something similar to that scene without it being a complete character break. Ridley goes to attack Adam. Now, instead of having a total shutdown, Samus has that flashback of Ridley killing her father. Because mm-hmm. that is in the manga. She witnessed that. Or him sacrificing himself. Mm-hmm. But having that attack. And that's when she, she breaks up for a second, but then she's like, I am not going to let you take another member of my family. And that's when she blasts him aside, and that starts the fight. Mm-hmm. That way, you have that moment of shock, that moment of PTSD, but in a way that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Where instead of it being a, a total shutdown, it's a uh, oh fuck that, not again, mm-hmm. and go and and make it, give it her make her more badass at that moment. Yeah. Best of Plus, all, she doesn't even have to say anything for it to happen. Mm-hmm. No, you you just see it on her face, and it tells the story. Yeah. And then that's and, and we're gonna follow that up shortly after. With uh, mother, mother Brain trying to set things up, leading to the sacrifice. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to set that scene a moment because that scene actually does work to some extent. That is the one time where you can allow Samus to be vulnerable. And in the, in the original game, it worked. Mm-hmm. But we can make it even better here. Because now, not only is that that sacrifice moment, but it's also the moment where both of them finally understand each other from not only today... But from the past, they finally understand what happened. They mm-hmm. finally have a moment to talk about that. Shit goes down. Adam makes the sacrifice. And with that understanding, that bond is complete, which makes the train just as sad, if not even sadder than the original. Mm-hmm. Put all that together, and now, instead of it being a character assassination, it's a character enhancement. Yeah. And... When it came, when it comes to the other, when it comes to the other, fe- when it comes to the other Federation um, Navy mem- Navy members in the group, I'd still do the twelve. I still do the ten little Indians story with that with them getting with them getting um, rubbed out. Yeah. Um, it's just it's just that instead of some mysterious deleter doing it, it w- it was it was Mel- it was Melissa doing it. Yeah. Which That's, makes more know, sense in the much- long run. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could still have the whole traitor storyline. It just—it's not some mysterious being. It's Mother Brain. Yeah, she's—it still works. And I would—I would say that that one of the bigger one of the bigger reveals should be the fact that they that they found a way to create Metroids that are that are resistant to freezing. Which which I'd I'd say I inevitably 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 the bottle ship is going to get blown up. And I'd say I'd say I'd say blowing up that whole experiment is is as good a reason as any to do it. Yeah. Instead instead of instead of more feder instead of more G Fed soldiers com- coming up and and perfor- and doing the we'll take it from here kind of scene. Mm-hmm. Um. But I I would. The but I would take the I would take the approach that. In that, in that, in that, fu- in we do ca- we do kind of have a repeat of the of of the mo- of the mother brain f- of the mother brain fight in the end, and I would have that play um, so- somewhat so- somewhat similarly. The I- but the idea here being the the la- the last co- the last um, the last security code um, deta- is de- is linked to the hyper beam, and instead so. It's, so it's more of a race of of surviving it, surviving until until you can until you can crack it, and then and then coming back to kick her ass. Um. 
just just to just to kind of put a capstone on the fact that she was the one responsible for enabling the security locks on on Samus's equipment. And if I could, let's throw a twist in here, because if I remember correctly in the original game, the the final battle aside from the Fantoon fight, which mm-hmm. was kind of a secret at final battle, was against an Omega Metroid or mm-hmm. no, the Queen Metroid. Yeah. So instead, what if, as part of that fight for survival, Mother Brain fuses with the Queen? Maybe that was the whole design was to fu- was to kind of c- fix the flaws in the programming and then have her fuse with the Queen Metroid to create these new resilient super powered Metroids. Mm-hmm. So you have that fusion happen here. So that's when you have to survive long enough for the hyper beam. Mm-hmm. And I'd I'd say I'd say I'd say I'd say in the aftermath of that, that's when you initiate you initiate the you initiate the self destruct you initiate the self destruct and get and get off and get off of the um, ship. Um, well, we're we're scrapping the fan tune fight altogether then. Um, I feel I feel like I feel like that's one of I feel like that's one of those things that you can go that should be. Should be in the case of you can go back. You can go back to this on a previous save, because the Fantoon fight, the way it's presented, doesn't really add or take away anything. Yeah, and it just it it feel it feels it feels like it it, it feels like a hidden bo- it feels like a hidden boss, the same the same way you'd see in cer- in certain vi- in certain video game RPGs, like say hidden bosses against Omega uh-huh. throughout throughout Final Fantasy. But yeah. it, but but there is but it but it doesn't have the it doesn't have the proper um gameplay adjustment to really ju- to really justify it being a hidden extra. It's almost it's almost like they had the Fantoon fight but they couldn't figure out where to put it in so they just put it in at the end. Yeah, maybe maybe you, maybe we could add an unlock something you could uh, unlock. Maybe you know what? Here's an idea. If you beat if you 100% the game like get every item, get everything, mm-hmm. and then you go and you reload that save file and beat Fantoon with 100. percent Then you can, then you can save, start that file over, but with the hyper beam already unlocked. This is a new game plus type of deal. Um, why am I reminded of Super da- of Super Dante? Yeah, I guess you could go with that. In in order. In the original Devil May Cry, in order to in order to get it, you had to beat Dante Must Die, which is which is easier said than done, and then you'd be able to <laughs> do then you'd be able to unlock Super Dante, which is basically just regular Dante with unlimited Devil Trigger, which is broken in and of itself because Devil Trigger bursts are a thing. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it is broken, but I think but I think it's an earned kind of broken where you have to go through the hardest difficulty at at the time in order to get it. Yeah. You're not the hardest difficulty. We don't count heaven and hell and hell and hell because they're not actually they're nope. gimmick difficulties. Yeah, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, something on that vein. So you know, it's you know, it, it'll be OP as hell. It's gonna break the game. But you've gotta earn that shit. Mm-hmm. Gotta do your 109 percent exploration. Oh yeah, and as and even and even. S- I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that the long that the longer speed that the longer speed runs with Metroid games are the ones that try and do one that try and do 100% as well. I'm pretty sure the shorter ones are the any percent ones. Oh, absolutely. As someone who's followed the Metroid speedrunning community, especially Super Metroid, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> the the GDQ speedruns are usually 100%. They're usually about 2 hours long and no, the there's been plenty of any percent runs. They they do a little bit of both. Yeah, but the, but the really... ones that get the most donation money are the ones that do I save the animals at the end or not? <laughs> Vote now with your wallets. Yeah, though, though, though to be fair, those have kind of they kind of not been as strong as they used to be. Though they're still pretty damn strong, but they're not like what they used to be in Death Prime, where that was like the dominant force in GDQ. Oh, yeah. At the at the very at the very least, it's a way to go through it without getting toast thrown at you. <laughs> or, or bread, or <laughs> or ha- or having to deal or having to deal with whatever the, whatever the whatever the fuck Ian was do- was doing with the whole prizes thing. 
Ah, uh, scent. <laughs> right. scent. What the hell scent was doing with just just la- just laying back like he wanted to like he wanted to be painted like one of your French girls. <laughs> oh come on, that was some of the best shit ever. Oh, I, oh, I know, I know it was, but I, I remember laughing, like going, "What the fuck are you doing?" Prizes. <laughs> All right, rails, yeah, rails. Getting, but getting getting back up, getting back on the getting back on the rails. Um, I would, I would, pro- I do, th- I would, af- in the after in the aftermath of it, um, I pro. I probably, I probably would, ha- I probably would have a, would have it that there's a back and forth between, between Samus and some, and some, G- and some, and some representative of the Galactic Federation asking, wh- asking what happened to the bottle ship, um, and the the res- the response, the response being, to- being, um, um, to- total loss. Ba- basically, basically, Samus lies about, lies about what happened. You know, you know, react. Um, something like a something like a reactor malfunction. We and th- and they had to ev- and they had to evacuate. Uh, ooh, a I reactor malfunction a, due to a biological weapons breach. Yeah, though I I would like to throw in a twist here. Mm-hmm. Let's tie the let's tie everything up together here. Let's say that the Galactic Federation rep doesn't quite buy her story entirely. And they decide to put her on a few missions, including one to I don't know, say SR three eighty eight. I'd say I'd say I'd say that would be I'd say that would be a lead in, and it's a lead in that you can get away with because Fusion had already been out for a few years. Exactly, and since we know that Fusion would be next in the timeline, it'd be a perfect setup for it. But you you could say that because because of what we what we know about Adam later on. You could say that it's not the next immediate thing they do. They'll just have a series, of, like they hand her a list of missions they want her to do, mm-hmm. and like at the bottom is SR three D eight. Or they drip feed her the stream of missions. They're like, we have a, uh, some tasks we'll need you to do. We're going to let you know your first task once you finish. Contact us, and we'll give you your next. Mm-hmm. Exactly, which seems much more military. Yeah, yeah, but at the end, at some point, hint that it's hint at some point that she's going to be going to SR three eighty eight, so we can tie it into fusion. Mm-hmm. We we can we can have it uh, as we're seeing it from the side of the G Fed representative. We see their computer screen while he's also talking to Samus over mm-hmm. communicator. Yeah, yeah, that works. That works. See, I like that. And you see SR three eighty eight. Just it's not even like obvious. It's not zoomed in on or anything, but the computer screen has. A profile for SR three eighty eight up on up on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I like that. I like that. Yeah, well, Metroid's always uh, rewarded those who pay attention to detail. Yeah, exactly. So it fits perfectly. Um, now I would say I would say that there is there is one there is one minor um one minor ga- one minor um gameplay thing that I, that I had con- that I considered given the fact that. You look at how you look at how Team Ninja does combo does combo systems, and there's always the fact that combos expand through a, through a straight up level up setup. Mm-hmm. Um, I am I am on, I am honestly I'm. A, it would be a bit of a stretch to say to say that you end up unlocking more techniques through terminals. I'm I'm thinking that th- that 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 would be the one case where you have a learn by doing system. I could see that. Um, additionally, as you unlock your major power suit systems, there's, you're going to unlock previous dossiers you may have had that suggest that are maybe, uh, previous mission, um, briefings and such that may have hints to certain combos you might be able to pull. Yeah. Again, Metroid, Metroid, uh, rewarding those who pay attention yeah it's not it's not a case of of you of you learn of you learning how to do an uppercut out of because because you saw it on a screen but more of you remembering um a past incident where you did it and think and thinking well I'm, i may as well try that here um especially especially since al- although it although a amount of time has never been specified i think i think it's pretty clear that even even before the first metroid samus already ha- already had Plenty of seasoning under under her belt, both both yeah, as she, a soldier as a, and as a bounty hunter. Yeah, she. Well, I mean, her combat training all came from when she was taken by the Chozo to Zeebs, uh, 
Zebes, excuse me, mm -hmm. and, and trained and given Chozo DNA. Um, she already had extensive combat training by the time she went into the G-Fed. And the power suit was likely the last thing left to her by Old Bird when, uh, when she left uh, Zebes, but she never used it in the G-Fed because there wasn't a, a reason to... She wasn't yet uh, on her own, she could rely on the equipment she was getting from the G head. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Oh, but st still having, still having these, still having the zero suit, um, despite that, which I think, I think is a case where that that'd probably that'd probably end up annoying pe annoying people in in G in G fed, but as a case of um, because of because of how it's biologically attached to her, it's not it's <laughs> not it's not a case. It isn't a it isn't a case where they where where they can just ha where they can just have her get rid of it. Yeah, it would it would probably kill her if they did. Yeah, so they're like it, it, it annoys them, but they're like, well, what are we gonna do about it? It's, it's it's either it's either it's either we force it and end up causing a and possibly cause a whole lot of cause a whole lot of damage, and 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 remove a potentially very useful asset given that she prop. She prob she probably ended up ended up skipping the usual the usual ch the usual chain because of her because of her abilities for her age. Yeah, she was likely placed into some sort of special squad immediately. Um, oh, pro probably be probably because her probably because trying to put her through basic prob wouldn't wouldn't go wouldn't go all that well when when ba when basic literally has nothing to teach her. I, <laughs> they'll, they'll start off trying to put her through bacon, like, but then she'll blaze through it so easily and so handily. They're like, "Okay, fuck this. Just, bl just go ahead and run her through." I'm it's gonna be, it's gonna be even better than that. Um, imagine being an NCO wa watching her go through the obstacle course. <laughs> you, you know, I, imagine one punch shit. man through all this. <laughs> no, no. You see, here's the thing. I, I can imagine this being a gag if you if you ever want to show it in like a. A gag manga for coma of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's her going through basic, literally hits like five or set or six hundred percent of required uh, PT ratings for for graduating basic. Uh, the noncom goes, "What the hell, Cadet Aran?" <laughs> and she's like, "This th this was morning exercises with the Chozo. Like this is <laughs> this is nothing." And then pr probably getting chewed out for saying this is nothing because it's the military and you get chewed out for everything. <laughs> and, and and we have the at, in that last panel of the thought bubble is like, ah, oh, it's just like Old Bird every morning. <laughs> <laughs> I love it! I love it! Um, I suppose, I suppose the, uh, the, other, the other gag I could see happening with Basic is and I, I will admit I am kind of stealing from Starship Troopers um, from, from the film because Fuck it, I li fuck it, I like that movie. Good movie. Uh, is is um in, is in sparring practice with one of the other recruits, and she because 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 of that because of that tra because of how hardcore that training that she already has is, um she ends up she ends up going a little bit too hard and and on a on a hold and ends up breaking a recruit's arm. I think it would I don't be funny. That's just her training, but just her natural chojo strength. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be funnier if she did a literal bird kick. <laughs> like jumping seven or eight feet in the air and coming down with a double kick to their shoulders. Mm -hmm. Oh, suddenly Samus Aran's a common rider now. <laughs> hey, 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 it's a bird kick. It's, it's just a jump and not a slide through the, through the air. This so is an actual jumping front kick. This isn't Gunbuster. <laughs> yeah, this is not the Inazuma kick. <laughs> I, th I think go I think going with I'm stick I in that particular thing I'd stick I'd stick with the I'd stick with the broken arm or or her or if you want or if you want to have if you want to have a different bit of funny um her her attempting attempting a gr attempting a grapple and throw and end up throwing <laughs> end up throwing him into a wall. I think that yeah. would be better. Yeah, I don't think, the, I don't think the, the the recruit should end up with broken parts, but definitely stars spinning. Uh, get the, the number of that the space visual, truck, and the visual 
of a cadet putting a dent in the wall, I think would perfectly sell it. Yeah. And of course, the only thing the drill sergeant has to say is, Cadet, take the sh t t hit the showers. Medic! <laughs> no, 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 no. The the uh, the non-com would turn to Aran and says, "That one's coming out of your pay. Either that, or you can fix that wall yourself." <laughs> now, now hit the showers, and then looks over at the guy on the ground. Medic! <laughs> Look, just just because just because if if you're gonna be doing these things in a gag manga, there's no there's no if you're gonna have a soldier, it's no reason to have a bit of military humor and. Contrary to popular belief, you can do military humor without bring without bringing in the filthier parts of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a sergeant telling someone that property damage is coming out of their pay is is the peak is peak humor in in basic. You get um, told that every day. Hell, I, I'm pretty sure I could contact my buddy Phantom Ryu, who's a military lawyer. I'm pretty sure he could come up with some damn good non-sexual jokes. Um. Here's 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 another one that you can probably do. Is <laughs> so, several people one of the if there's one thing that triggers some that triggers some of the some of the army people I've I've met it's um it's hearing cadence. <laughs> <laughs> it's, especially 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 since the especially since some. Well, some branches don't do cadence as much, but the story that I keep hearing is the army likes to do cadence. Anytime you're marching somewhere, period. <laughs> I don't know, but I've been told. I'm not. I'm not doing it. Don't. Come on, monk. You know you want to. Nope. 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 No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> the the gag that I was the gag that I was that I was going with is it is. Is they've been, is everybody's everybody's half dead from doing cadence for like hours, whereas whereas Samus is whereas Samus is is still is still is still marching, but but she's but she's alone. Either she either she's alone Ahead or of... she either she's either she's alone or she's sleepwalking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I no, I think the best part would be she's still doing cadence. She's still saying it. Everybody's still saying it, but because she's kept cadence. She's ahead of the formation, so the non-com goes, Iran, get back in formation. <laughs> like, but they're not keeping up. <laughs> yeah, because there's you look at you look at how she portrays herself in some of the flashbacks, and there's a bit of a rebellious streak. Mm -hmm. I don't th I don't think I don't think that's something that should be gotten rid of, but more recontextualized. And yeah. having having these kind of having these kind of gags where she where she was just completely outclassing ev everybody in basic, which is why she got ki which is why she got um, kicked upstairs. Most mostly beca mostly do mostly due to the whole thing of what the why the why the fuck is why the fuck is somebody who's out, who's outperforming everybody who's outperforming everybody in PT mm -hmm. doing doing all the way down here. Why is somebody who literally just broke all of the records for our PT records for humans ever? Uh, Actually, yeah, and you know what? Let's tie it all up again. Mm -hmm. Let's just say Adam came down one day, saw, like, heard about the records, went to check it out, saw how good she was. He's like, I want her on my squad. I'll, I'll, I'll help shape her up. <laughs> I'll make sure that she's good. That she's a good part of the Federation. Which I'm. I'm pretty. Sh I'm pretty sure would have a bit of objections, and and you can just have you can just have him saying, "Did I ask for your opinion?" Well, no. <laughs> you, this is where we can actually get the joke of any objections, lady, to be established and mean something. Yeah, because I'm. I'm pretty. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that some of the other recruits were probably probably had a few nicknames for her invol involving her strength. And if if it sound if it sounds like. If if it sounds like there'd be a few gorilla jokes out out of it, that's kind of what I'm going with. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like this could be Adam. Adam talks with the noncom, knows that she's you know she should be out of basic right now, and his his platoon is already some sort of experimental, super secret, whatever type platoon. Mm -hmm. So he's like, you, yeah, you. I'm talking to you, the tall one. <laughs> 
you're in my you're in my platoon now. And of course, she's gonna be like, "What are you on about?" You know. Pro like, probably because she's she has the mindset of I need to finish basic first before he, before that even happens. Yeah. And the, and the non common be down and be like, "Are you talking back to a superior officer?" Because <laughs> the drill sergeant is of course going to voice it, and of course then you know Adam mm -hmm. at ease, and he's like, "Got any objections, lady?" Mm -hmm. And and you know in her face. Yeah. Which, yeah. I think Adam would probably be uh, only slightly taller than her if we're keeping 6'3 Samus, which I think we absolutely need to. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I think I think in this case, yeah, you can have her... At this point in the past, you can have her be just a slightly bit shorter. She'd probably be... She'd probably be um, either five, either 5'11... Five between 5'11 and 6'1. Yeah. Have her be slightly taller... And, and and that's when he can like look. He can just slightly look down at her, mm -hmm. and yeah, have that be the th have that that yeah. Any objections, lady? Mm -hmm. and, and and then she can just kind of. That's when she can also turn around and throw the thumbs down because like, too bad you're coming with me. Mm -hmm. Oh, but I th but th finish th basic. It's like at the end panel. His his finger in her collar. Dragging her off, <laughs> but I gotta finish training, <laughs> lady. You finished training a long time ago. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, and again, again, we have we we very we very clearly have the reason why the reason why I'd I'd bring up these kind of gags is one, they're funny, and two, you already have you already have a care. One of the one of the big criticisms I have with the way with the way Adam was portrayed is that it was portrayed in a manner in, where so, where someone has an idea of how, an idea of how a a um a co would work, but on, but only ha only half of an idea. Whereas surface level knowledge, at yeah. Most. The the, sur the service level knowledge that you might get from say Star Trek and movies. Any well, military movies? Yeah, we're and gr granted, we're dr granted, we're drawing upon that a bit as well. I already mentioned Starship Troopers, but but we're draw we're drawing upon it in a way in a way that we are we already have we already we already have a military presence established. So use a so use a little bit of of military humor one in one form or another. Um, and Park, go ahead. Do do you hear? I, I, I can hear one thing in the distance. Shamish would never be that humorous. I, oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Off. I'm sorry. She may be a badass when she's on the job, but she's still a fucking human! Yeah. yeah. Uh, th I think that's something we need to say. The, th the, the, the big complaint was that, you know, she was too emotional, and which we do agree that in, in Other M... She had way too many moments of over emotional instability, mm -hmm. but we're not gonna sit here and say on the same token that she's a stone cold ice queen with no emotions whatsoever. She ain't a fucking robot. She's going to have moments of levity, Le you know, especially during the past when she hadn't established her her uh, herself as a badass yet. You can get away with this shit. Yeah, this is this is the reason why earlier on I said. A lot, a lot of people, are, a lot of people arguing for that whole stone coldness, don't have an understanding of um, stoicism. Stoicism, stoicism, was was a was a was originally a philosophy that emer that emerged in ancient Greece. The idea. Diogenes. Um, actually, actually, it was Zeno of Sidium who who fir who first put it forward. The idea, the idea is that is that um. Is that hu is that is that human fault is in excess emotion, so so the so you should re so you should strive for so in order to reduce the potential for failure you should strive for pure reason. Um, I know some I know it'd be tempting to bring up the to bring up the um, Vulcans, which doesn't apply for two reasons: one, a space elf is still a filthy elf, and two. <laughs> The Vulcans have a the Vulcans like to throw like to throw around logic like it's going out of style with mo with movements that are completely illogical. No, I will yeah. never let no. that shit go. 
and, no, and, no, you want a, you want an example of a stoic character? I'm gonna throw a uh, weapon from from a wheelhouse we're all very familiar with, Shotaro Hidari. Pretty pretty much because because yes, he had moments where he was over the top, zany, and silly. But when it was time to put up or shut up, there was very little that could flinch that man emotionally. Yeah. He, he when it came time to actually look into reason, he had pinpoint accuracy. In fact, a lot of the screaming, which is which is why which is why I just, which is why I said if I were to summarize Common Rider Double in one sentence, it is it is um local Chicago and screams at everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's more it's more the, it's more the fact that he that he recovers very quickly, but he does get thrown off very quickly as well. When th- yeah. when th- when things when things go in an unexpected way, and granted, some of that is some of that is just is just Japanese comedy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like you said, he's also just as quick to bounce back and get his head back on straight. Even even at the end, when he's at his worst, it doesn't take him that long to get his get himself back where he needs to be. Which is what which is why I I honestly think it. I don't want to delve too much on this, but I think that's why it's a stroke of brilliance that hit that his Gaia memory is Joker. The wild card. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason I said Diogenes was just because you said philosophers of Greece and my favorite philosopher of Greece is Diogenes the Cynic because <laughs> he's fucking hilarious. Oh, oh yes. And, um, well, I have commit, I've, Committed for, to memory for the longest time, the drunken philosophy song. <laughs> As you know, but, uh, anyway, all I'll, all I'll say is that Emmanuel Kant was a real pissant who was very rarely stable. Oh my God! Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. All right, rails, boys. Yeah, but over overall, if if you're going, if you're going to, if you're going to, tr- if you're going to try and, if you're going to try and humanize, um, a a character in this re- in this regard, the idea the ideal means of doing it is to show them going through the human experience, to show them as a character. And I sh- I should note with a lot of the, with a lot of the gags that we mentioned when it came to her time in Basic. Which you could e- you could easily put you could easily put as four comas in in Famitsu or whatnot. The kind of humor that I've gone with is dry humor. Not a not a case of not a case of Samus cracking jokes and one liners, but more but more uh, but more of getting into getting into humorous situations through her through her own doing. Yeah. I I think I think a lot I think a lot of people see see the see the humorous thing and o- and only hear w- and only hear in their head one liners and the like. Um, I don't I'd, on- I'd honestly say that the approach that we're doing with th- with this particular brand of military humor has more in common with say, um, with say go- golden age of in some regards golden age of animation. Or, to or to a lesser extent, some forms of um, British humor. Especially since, as as I have mentioned plenty of times in the past, brevity is the soul of wit. Yes. Um, the only the only Starship Trooper joke I I I was tempted to use in this, but I realized I couldn't is is the push a button. <laughs> Private, put your hand on that wall. The enemy cannot push a button if you disable his hand. I mean. You, you could do the, the you could do a reversal of the joke. Okay, I'm listening. So it's uh, Samus goes just. What if all they have to do is push a button? Put your wall on the hand and put put your hand on the wall. Throws the knife. She catches it. I could still push a button, Sarge. Either that, or just have, or just have the knife break. <laughs> what was that supposed to do, Sarge? I can still push a button. <laughs> All right, that's it, Cadet Aran. You're on latrine duty for the next twenty-four hours. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. I was just thinking that. <laughs> Have him get really pissed off. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Actually, let how I got some. I know something worse than latrine duty. Uh -oh. Onion duty. Oh no! I know something worse than onion duty. Potatoes. KP. <laughs> oh god. I, I'll, even, even my even my evil has standards, but you may you may want to give you may want to give the summary of what KP is. Kitchen patrol. You are essentially the cleaning dog of the kitchen and mess hall for a period of one to three weeks. Not only do you clean all of the utensils and cleaning apparatus, you clean the actual dishes that the that all other cadets recruits whatever use you clean the mess hall itself which means any spills any other stuff <clears throat> this also means that you're the one taking out the remains of potato and onion duty you are uh you are the cleaning whipping boy <laughs> and yeah, uh I think, I think even samus would uh, would flinch at that yeah the others would be probably be pretty easy that's it Ran KP the next week. <laughs> there you go. Um, side note for anyone considering uh, the U.S. Job Corps, uh, you will be required to do three weeks of KP, no matter how you join. <laughs> oh. I know from experience. Yeah, at the very, it could. It, just remember, it could be worse because Fort Polk still exists. It could always be worse. You could be doing KP for a bunch of uppity. Insert group here. Any group, yeah. uppity, whatever. <laughs> but I think I think with all that said, with it, we've we've certainly gone we've certainly gone over the the waste the wasted potential and the wasted potential. Thank you for Snake for that. Of of, of other M, as well as, as well as as well as try and put in. I, wa I wanted to I wanted to do I wanted to capstone with those with those particular gags to kind of spin a negative into a positive. That's all. That's always an important thing here in the temple. We try to leave things better than they were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not here to just bash things and break them down. We're here to build them back up into something greater. Yeah, ironically, yeah. much like an actual boot camp. Mm -hmm. Ah. If you if you want, if you want to have, if you want to have, if you want to have somebody j just break, just break things, just break things down and tell you how everything sucks, um, Razor Fist is that way. Or, clo <laughs> or closer to home, you can go watch the Shogun's tent. <laughs> <laughs> and now I really hope Aaron is listening to this later. <laughs> we'll, s we'll see. We'll, s I'll cross that bridge. Is when we get there. It fired. <laughs> Look, I'm look. I'm not above. I'm not above a little verbal sparring. You know, you know that. Um, I, I I do feel a little bad picking on someone shorter than me in that department, though. Do you have the slightest idea how little that narrows it down? <laughs> yeah, I feel the short shit in the room compared to you guys. Oh, uh, but with with all that said, we will be we will be back here. On su on Sunday, this was just a bit of catch up because I had planned on doing this last week, but I ended up get I ended up getting a massive head a massive headache. Probably probably seasonal whiplash decided to finally bite me like it does every year. And so I so um we so this was a catch up, but we'll be back with we'll be back with the usual Sunday time slot. Um, I will note like I noted like I noted on Sunday. November seventh, I will not be doing Geek Watch because I will be in the process of mo I will be in the process of moving to a to a spot that's a little bit closer to my line of work. Unfortunately, I'm st unfortunately it's still heavily forested, which means I'm gonna still be assaulted by geese. Yeah, but forested also means you don't have to deal with a lot of dumb shit people either. No, I um. I've made I've made it clear as long as long as I'm breathing in and breathing out I am not stepping foot in Minneapolis again. <laughs> <laughs> I had a bad experience fi um, 15 years ago. Let's put it that way. That's but, sad. But with all with all that said, eh, so until then, 
On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, and join the watch.